It's all about this track. It is a crown jewel, if ever there were crown jewels. It is one of the crown jewels of endurance racing in the fact that it holds its esteemed esteem, or esteemed esteem, some would say, uh, as I've already said, actually, twice now. Uh, it would find itself a great place alongside the likes of the Spa, or Spa does find itself a place alongside the likes of the Nürburgring, alongside Le Mans, alongside the likes of Fuji and so many other great 24-hour events. It holds itself in esteem in the likes of Formula events with the likes of Monaco, the great British Grand Prix at Silverstone. It holds itself in that regard. This track is a place where it brings legends to life. It creates names. And you know that if you can master this place for seven whole kilometers, you can do so for two hours here today. You find yourself with the XR Virtual Motorsports XTCR Spa 50. This could be one of the biggest championships that you can fight for, for one off event in race room this year. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody watching around the world for fantastic coverage. Brought to you here by Exile Virtual Motorsports. It's Jake Sperry here in the commentary box, joined by a very important specialist to this series. And that, of course, is Mr. Alex Everett joining me for this one. Alex, to welcome you into the conversation. Qualifying is just about starting. There's 30 minutes of open qualifying. You can get to the end of your laps. And, of course, Mastermind rules. Once you've started, you may finish your laps as you go on through. The first laps will be starting to be run right now. Just what are we going to be expecting here today from these drivers? It's two hours. It's going to be a much different challenge from a sprint. But more importantly, qualifying is all about track position. It becomes vital today. Absolutely, Jake. And thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. Good day. Um, good afternoon, wherever you are. But yes, um, today's event is going to be very strange for us because this is an event for once in XR. We, no one can predict. It is a huge grid of such talented drivers evened out by ballast um a fixed setup as well and such a range of manufacturers what are we going to expect today well it's a two-hour race with the potential for very very different pit strategies um fuel can be taken on tires can be taken on the amount of time you stay out on track is going to vary with every single driver that is going to be something we're not going to be able to predict and Pit strategy, above all, could be what wins this race, Jake. And that could be key as well. So strategy will be something to keep in mind at this point in time. Some drivers already trying to get out there and get their laps in on the board. But we have seen how close it's been already when it has come to qualifying. Let's go on board with the driver in 22nd currently classified. But going down, this is the link car of Zirai Garunian at the moment heading his way up the camel straight towards the lakeum section and this is the opening path of the lap this is his first flyer that he is on 42 2 his quickest as he goes through into the right the left and then the right of malmedy before looking to head away back down the hill towards the ravage corner now known as bruxelles but now this is going to be where you deal with it it's downhill on the brakes gravity doesn't help you slow down for this corner and it's so easy to run wide off into that fantastic uh, bit of Astro there on the outside. Then you head to Jack Yeats Corner, the former corner without a name. It's been had a number of names, actually. It's had Speaker's Corner once upon a time, but now has itself that name of Jack Yeats Corner. Then you've got the double left of Pujon, which is all about trying to carry as much momentum as possible. Seems pretty conservative to start there in the link there, Alex, for the first half lap, but the second half, first time's come in. Yes, that's right. And many of these cars will be better on split uh, sector ones. Many of these cars will be better on sector t uh, three. Many of these cars will be better on sector two. The link, I would say, is better. It's more in its elements in sectors one and three. But looking at Gurunyan's time so far in sector one, I would say there's plenty more in the tank from Gurunyan there. Um, about nearly four tenths off the pace from the current quickest time. And he has dropped. He has come a little bit closer at the end of sector two there. I think we've got more to see from Zariah at the moment. Um, it is worth keeping an eye on him, but we can see William Foyle so far is the quickest um, in qualifying so far. It's a long way to go, of course, but a 31.6. I believe these guys are just warming up, Jake. I certainly think they are. Pajinos there has got himself to just three hundredths behind us. 
through the final chicane goes Shirai Garunian looking to finish off a lap then here at this Belgian track Spa Francorchamps and he comes across the line it's a long drag to the line a 32-1 puts him half a second off the pace and is the second quickest link car in the field in sixth position behind his uh, Ukrainian teammate and his compatriot Viktor Gorik there in fifth position overall so this is going to be a very interesting challenge and someone who's gone purple in the first sector is Nate Long in the Volkswagen at the moment he is the second quickest of the Volkswagens foil currently fastest at the moment but Long the American is now looking for the right left chicane of Fania at the moment he is flying we'll see what the second sector comes in as Casciello moves up to third Cacciello, we saw he did very well in practice, actually. He was one of the quickest, and that little Alfa Romeo with an Italian driver, how appropriate. They're going very well at the moment, but uh, just referring back to Nate Long, as you said, he's about to come to the end of Sector 2 as he comes out of Stavelot. He has slipped behind Foyle in that sector. Um, not a very good one from him indeed, but it is only separated by less than a tenth, which is extraordinary on a long track like this. Sector three will be interesting here, using all the road. He even w exceeded the limits a little bit. He had toe as well here, Alex. That's also crucial to keep in mind there. Car 50 in front there, giving a whole heat there, and that's the DHL machine there, I do believe that is, giving just a little bit of help over to the line. Sorry to steal your thunder like that, I was just going to point that out for you, uh, but across the line, it's going to be a long drag, going to see, not using all the toe on the exit, that's going to be interesting there, to see from Long, who is just short, but goes fourth at that time, so in terms of improving his time, he has just not been able to find it. No, no, I'm, I'm quite surprised about that, considering Nate did so well in sector one. But if Lindbergh in front of him is quick enough, Nate might be able to utilize this lap now with the toe as he comes down through Eau Rouge, cutting much of the curb, and again on the right-hander, and again on the third. Brilliant use of the road from Nate Long here. Still quite a way behind Lindbergh, enough to know where the road is going and enough to get a good enough toe as he runs up towards sector one. How is he going to do? It looks like he's closing in very close to Lindbergh. He might spoil his lap unless Lindbergh moves out of the way. An extraordinary sector one from Nate Long. He is nearly three tenths quicker than William Foyle on this one, but he needs Lindbergh to get out of the way now or Lindbergh to speed up one or the other. Jake, take it away for sector two. Well, it's going to be crucial to note here. Those times that you're seeing purple are actually to their own sector times, not to the race leader. Keep that in mind as they push on forward. Nate Long is needing to find improvements. He's three tenths of a second back. And currently, he only needs to find half a tenth of a second now to get going. And now he's actually going to have to pull an overtake, potentially, to get himself going. As actually Tamash Jaeger moves up into fourth position as we see that one. So that's going to be a crucial run there to Honda. First Honda getting themselves up there. Here's something to keep in mind right now. Top four, Volkswagen, Hyundai, Alfa Romeo, Honda. Yes, excellent. That is exactly what we wanted out of this race. Manufacturers fighting it out. But an interesting fact about Tamas Jaeger coming into this race. He won the test race we did one week ago here at Spa. Um, and he won it on the final corner where uh, his teammate, um, trying, to, trying to find his name, his teammate um, went into the final corner too deep on the final lap and undertook him as he came out of the chicane to win the race by only a few hundredths of a second. Will we get that kind of finish today? I hope we do. But Tamas Jaeger, very much the bookies are in his favour at the moment. They certainly are, and we'll see what Tamash can do, continuing the form shown by practice races and practices earlier on in the racing. Someone to keep in mind at the moment. Not on track just now, but he is in seventh position. This is Harry Melvin, and here's someone who has only picked up race room for a couple of weeks now, and at this point, he has found a very good ornate ability with pace and of course he's got a lot of time to go before he picks himself up and he finds true pace but the early stage of development and it's not often you see someone immediately go quick if you've got that natural pace to go out there and challenge and be within half a second of qualifying at this moment in time that's going to be really really interesting to see how this race goes as actually we've got Hevesi there moving up into third position in the Alfa Romeo that's the 2018 Alfa Romeo worth keeping in mind here Alex got both 2018 and 2019 Alfa Romeos the way to distinguish one from the other well it's an all Italian team working in the 2019 machine so you could effectively say they have the factory car 
Absolutely, it's very appropriate that they're in the car. Davide Castello leading the way for their team at the moment. Simone Guido is also in seventh place now. I, I'm expecting good things from him. He had a very good running last Saturday here. But yes, the, the variance between the two alphas, one uh, probably has a little more paint on than the other. But um, they, they certainly are pretty little cars, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how they will behave here. So the Alpha's Achilles heel is top end speed. It will struggle in Sector 1. It will struggle in Sector 3. But what I think the Alfa Romeo and the Persia are going to have at the, um, on the upper hand on the other cars is Sector 2. It loves the corners, these cars do. Their small wheelbase is well suited to Sector 2 at Spa. Bang. And I believe, ah, first place, Lee Horn. Take it away, Jake. He's next gen, he's got himself going. We also saw uh, Shoka move up into fourth position. Dejo Shoka there, and there's Kanye. Whoa. And there's Digi Kimi putting a 2.31.4 on the board. The track is heating up as we head to the halfway stage in just two and a three quarter minutes time. All of a sudden, bang, bang, two drivers put themselves to the top. Alpha from Audi now here at the top of the timing stand. And it's worth noting as well here, Alex, you've got the top 16 split by one second at the moment as Fraser Rostens improves up to 15. Uh, excellent stuff from this field so far. One second difference at a track like Spa is extraordinary. But Digi Kimi, um, Khan Yen in, in his real life name, in first place, it's worth mentioning that, uh, that he has only ever won one exiled race in the past. And that was in our DTM season last season at uh, the Red Bull Ring Spielberg. Um, well, that is a surprise if I'm honest. And no disrespect to Digi Kimi, but he is really really put the effort into practice clearly for this event that is an extraordinary time and with 15 minutes remaining i that might be difficult to beat jake it might be difficult to beat but drivers are going to be looking now for the extra oomph the extra one tenth half a tenth here and there they're going to try and open up every corner and see how this goes at the moment your top 10 looks like this so you've got niang from horn you've got william fall in third then in fourth position you have yourself Vangelis Parginos up into fifth goes uh, Shoka at this point in time. Hevesi in sixth position. Casciello's in seventh. Uh, Zgarunian actually has jumped up into eighth place, dropped down to ninth all of a sudden because Alex Foyle has just jumped up into fifth place. So Garunian now back to ninth. And Tamas Jaeger in 10th position, just four and a half tenths off. It is worth noting that this track is seven kilometers long. It's a two and a half minute lap here, Alex. So actually looking at this, four and a half tenths here, say at a track which is a lot shorter in length. Say you take likes of, uh, for example, a track which is about a minute 30. Those gaps would be down a lot more. They'd be split by about two tenths here, the top 10. So that just shows you here around a long track like this, everybody still with a very good opportunity the top 22 split by 1.2 seconds on the road and it's worth talking about some of these drivers a little bit further down the order because someone could make a run from deep in this field with the strategy someone like maybe luca carancini in 21st position you got the likes behind that as well of petter nystrom uh, there in 22nd these sorts of drivers who are just a second back if they play fuel save and tire save strategy well they could make, for example, a one-stop strategy work from mid-pack in the field. Exactly. I mean, the old saying goes, to finish first, first, you've got to finish. That is something to bear in mind. But also, pit strategy, as I said earlier, is going to play a major factor in this. You could get a dark horse come through, red run the race almost, and take it at the very end. You know, pole position, like the Indy 500, doesn't always mean they're going to win the race here. Um, just talking about Alex Foyle now, fifth place he took. Um, him and his brother William Foyle have been competing in the British Race Room Championship, doing very well in their splits um, over there. Um, it is great to see them in the top five so far. Um, last week's winner was... Um, not Hevesi. Who was last week's winner, Jake? <laughs> you said it was Tamas Jaeger. Who was yeah, Tamas Jaeger. Position. Tenth position. I'm, I'm expecting a bit more from Tamas Jaeger. He is more into tank as 14 minutes are remaining. We were talking about Nate Long not long ago. Um, Gurun Yan's in ninth place, which is a huge surprise for me. But Digi Kimi, first place at the moment. A huge turnout for the books. I'm very interested to see what kind of strategy he's got. If he's really worked on his strategy as well as his pace, He's in for a good race here.
worth noting here that there are 36 drivers today who will be looking for their times down at the bottom of the timing stands is the Hyundai of David Kovacs at the moment who will be looking to try and improve uh, on those positions yet to set a time at the moment the only other driver who hasn't set one really that's brilliant is Thanos Lukadakis who will be looking to try and find uh, a bit more pace over the course of the laps of course drivers can invalidate their lap times that's something that they've got to be careful of and that's a 238.9 uh, from Lukadakis that puts him on the board but down at the bottom of the board uh, at this point in time so we'll keep an eye out on all these drivers who will be looking to push for these times uh, out on the road at the moment but this is the key that they're looking at. This is the sort of track where actually, Alex, you look at it and you've got a long Kemmel straight and you've got that run up through Blanchemont uh, and co. at the moment as actually uh, we have seen Havesi move up into third position now uh, on his times. Great lap from him as he's done himself a 31.5 to put himself up ahead of William Foyle. It might actually be a case where you might need teammates to work together up the hill through the likes of the Kemmels and co to really leapfrog and give themselves that track position. 400s only at the front, and you've got to look at it. A tenth here, a tenth there. That's the difference here at the front of the pointy end of two or three positions. Exactly. And you say in a tenth here, a tenth there, that's only running wide at one corner. That's going to cost you that. Every millimetre is important at the moment. Hevesi has gone a little bit quicker than Melvin. it. Harry what Melvin, a what a time, yes. I didn't expect to see 230s today. Wow. We have now, and it's a 230.9. He has put almost half a second on the field with a worldie of a time. Harry Melvin, where has that come from? Alex, I have to ask, what has he eaten for breakfast? Oh, <laughs> not sure. But wow, what a time. Petrol in his system, maybe. But uh, two Audis in the top three at the moment. We were talking about the Alfa Romeos a minute ago, but now it's all about the Audis. Most people's favorite car, one very famous on iRacing, of course, but Harry Melvin, could this be history in the making? He has only had a PC for a number of weeks. He's only tried race room for a number of weeks. He's top of the table at the moment. What a story this would be. You know, even if he doesn't finish first, even if he finishes you know, near the top, what a story from this young man today already. He's still got 11 and a half minutes to hold on to that in qualifying. So clearly he's found something where everyone else has not been able to just yet. Zira Garunian has been quicker in his first two sectors and he does improve. He goes to eighth position green in all three sectors. It means he's found good improvement there in the link. He is the leading link in eighth position at this point in time. That's going to be key to keep in mind the longer this goes on. So, Melvin from Nyang, and then you've got Horn in third, Havesi, Foyle, Parginos, and then Alex Foyle there in seventh position. Garunian currently in eighth place, but there is, of course, still time remaining in this session, even for drivers who are maybe outside of the top 10 right now. Someone like Victor Gorick, for example, in 14th place on the 32-1. He's down half a second on his first sector. He's run really wide there through the Jackie Inks corner. You can push out a little bit wide there, but not too much because, of of course, the director's off-track incidents that come in as actually that's Peter Jacob there, I do believe that is, jumping up to 16th in the Hyundai. Excellent from Peter Jacob. He's been a bit quiet in Exiled Leagues of recent, but Half, more than Choker. halfway at the table. Choker goes into second place. Not far ahead of Digikimi and still quite a way off Melvin. But Choker is really showing his pace today. He has improved his time little by little at the top of that table there. That's been the key. Just little by little. Ten minutes to go here in qualifying. And anything is possible at the moment. It's one drive ahead of the lot as there goes Tonga Guardia up into 14th place there. The Argentine pushing that Volkswagen very, very well. So he'll be looking to try and push on a little bit more. He's 1.1 seconds off of pole position at this point in time. So he's doing some great work there to get himself moving on forward right now. So we'll see who finds themselves in the right position at the right time to get themselves moving on forward. But now you're starting to get into this scenario. You're in the last third of qualifying right now and you're looking at maybe setting two maybe three if you're really pushing it laps in a row Alex so how do you really maximize as much as you can in the final stages of a qualifying 
low fuel. You've just got to risk everything in these final stages. I mean, qualifying position in this race is going to be, well, it's going, it's going to be crucial in the sense that you do not want to be in the middle of the pack where the drama may unfold and you may lose your ground early on in the race. That is something you do not want to happen. So these guys will be, need to go all out to get up there. Low fuel and maximizing the tires maximizing the track is everything you need to do at this point at a track like spa you can ex you can maximize track limits as fraser rostance of the next gen team takes 11th place and there's another one david oh, kovacs that. takes second place wow he was down right at the bottom of the timing stands in 36th position only 10 minutes ago and now he's up to second he's found a great time in a hyundai and the hungarian has done brilliantly. He has halved the gap down to Harry Melvin at the top there, who's on a 30.9 at the moment. So we'll see how this one looks to improve in the final eight minutes. So now you just got to try and micromanage every section of track to see who has the improvements. One driver, or only two drivers actually, outside in the top 10 even, are not out of contract. They are the race leader or the qualifying leader at the moment, Harry Melvin in the Leopard Racing Audi. And they can see as well in the sixth position right now, uh, Sander Havesi, who is uh, just pulled off to the side of the road at this moment in time. So drivers look to get themselves in, get themselves some good times at the moment, and get themselves back out again in terms of your manufacturers. Once more, it is four manufacturers inside the top four. Audi, followed by Hyundai, followed by Honda, followed by Alpha. That's going to be key, and it's an 18 Alpha as well, making that push there to fourth position. This is going to be a very interesting race in the field. is as close and as bunched up as this is. 36 cars into La Source and up Eau Rouge Radion. That's going to be something to keep in mind here, Alex. <laughs> I'm very much going to be covering my eyes for that first corner, Jake. But um, just looking at Harry, um, Harry Melvin, he, he seems to have put the kettle on. Feet up in the garage. Uh, he, I think he thinks he's in the bag. There's seven minutes to go. I, I wouldn't be resting if I was Harry Melvin, if I'm honest. But, you know, let's see if he does go out and try to improve his time just for insurance. David Kovacs is still out on track. I'm not sure if his split times have gone any quicker. Um, so far, he might be on an out lap. Like uh, that. It does, yes. Yeah. So we'll have to keep an eye on him when he comes around. Uh, Deja Choka is in the pit still. Um, might be getting fresh rubber on. But these guys, like Formula One, will time their entry, um, sorry, exit from the pits just right so they get the absolute most laps they can as Lee Horn in the other Audi goes third place, Jake. That's crucial then. So Audi's one and three at the moment, but crucially, it is a different teams for those so lee horn who thinks he's next gen he's in the come to you uh, team audi car compared to the leopard racing audi at this point in time but making progress he's only three and a half tenths of a second off a of pole position at the moment but being on the second row of the grid is going to be key as well so we'll see how this one all plays out at the moment as we get drivers looking to make their pushes up through the field and find that extra little bit of improvement out there on track. You've got drivers who are just outside of the top 10 who were up there at the top earlier on in the session. One of them is Nate Long in 12th position. So surprised to see him going through, but he had a green first sector, a green second sector here. He's four tenths off at the moment, heading to the final sector. At the moment, he's on for fourth place. Absolutely, Nate Long. Impressive stuff as he comes through Blanchemont. There is a driver who has slipped off of this top 10. I think there's a disconnection somewhere. I think it was William Foyle has disc probably disconnected, had a, a technical difficulty on his end. Hopefully he can find his way back in with five minutes to go. He was on Both for a top Foyles. 10 spot. Both Foyles, yeah, so maybe, well, same household. Maybe something going on there. Yeah, but Nate Long comes across the line. He, sixth place. Sixth place. Excellent from Nate Long. Making up for the Crest Autosport team as the foils are, have disappeared temporarily. Let's see if they get back in. But Nate Long carrying the flag for the Volkswagen right now. Well, that's going to be a shame here if they've had themselves issues of that technical variety. Of course, if the internet goes out, there's not much you can say about it there. There's not much you can do. So everybody, uh, uh, everyone, all runners advance, I think it is, uh, up a couple of places for those. So like to Guardia up to 14th. You've got likes of uh, Zagva up into 20th position now, 1.6 seconds. But he's just been bumped down by Petter Nystrom, uh, who has just jumped up 
uh, into 20th position on his own accord there, making a uh, very good run of things in the Cupra. So uh, that is the leading Cooper actually, in this field in 20th position. Surprised to see them so far down the order. Uh, per and Petter Nystrom in this race, unrelated Nystroms. Yes, yes, that's worth, that is certainly worth pointing out. They are unrelated. It's from the same country, however, Enough. sweet. Paginas jumps to fourth. There's a reason why he's got a number one on his door. Vangelis Paginos is the defending exile TCR champion from late 2019. And he's a very, very, very talented driver, bearing the name of the GSR team. It'd be interesting to see what he can do in this race. Qualifying, you know, he might be thinking, you know what, I've got the pace. Three tenths off, you know, is anyone going to keep up consistent pace that high up? Vangelis might be thinking of the long run here. Well, the long run's going to be key. Three minutes to go here in qualifying. So keep this in mind. Just three minutes means that drivers need to be out now if they want to be trying to get a lap in on the board. They've got about 30 seconds. So anyone who finds themselves in the pits right now, likes of a Nate Long or a Havesi right now, they need to get going now if they're going to get around and get a lap in on the board. Currently, as things stand, a lot of drivers looking to try and put some times together, as well as the man who is out there at the moment, fastest, back out on track again. But he is, at the moment, a quarter of a second slower than his fastest, going through the opening sector of the lap. So that's something to keep in mind here. Just a little bit off the pace right now, but he's probably gearing this one up for a two-lap run as he looks to try and get it going. In fact, he's going to pull it back into the pits and he won't have time to get back out and around again. So this is crucial. Leader stuck at 230.9. We'll see who can find improvements here in the final two minutes. And good news. Um, well, half good news. William Foyle is back in the server. He, will not, he probably won't have time to set a time. In fact, he won't have enough time to set a time because once the time expires in qualifying and the race, that's it. It does not let you complete your lap. So William Foyle and if Alex Foyle can get back in the server, they will be at the back of the grid. So for them, it is now all down to natural pace and consistency and their pit strategy. It is not going in the way of the falls at the moment. Alex Foyle is back in the server. Great news for the two Crest Autosport drivers from Britain and they and you can catch them tomorrow on the British Race Room Championship at Silverstone but very much right now with one and a half minutes to go um, we'll have to see if anyone is on a fly but there's not many still out on track Harry Melvin looks to be set to take pole position in his debut in exile Jake uh, is are there is there anyone who is on a flyer from what you can see Kovacs is at the moment, but he is almost four tenths down in the opening sector, but he'll have another lap as he'll push it over to the line. One minute to go. Anybody out on track now has to go and find these improvements. Garunian is on improvements right now in ninth position here at the moment. He's green through the first two sectors. He's three and a three quarters back. At the moment, he'll be good enough to jump above Shoka into fifth place, but he needs a good final sector where the link does work well on the top end and the top speed. So we'll keep this in mind as they look to try and push towards the final couple of corners and hope that it's going to be working here through the right, through the left, making the push over to the line. Has one more opportunity after this. Keep that in mind, using all of his road tax there as he makes the push over to the line. 330, 331. He goes to seventh there and he improves there six tenths of a second away and he will not look for any more improvements Kovacs dives down onto the lane he will not go any quicker just 20 seconds remain you've got the likes of Fraser Rostens at the moment looking to try and find just a little bit and more up through the final sections of corners at the moment it seems nobody in the top 10 really has anything to argue with at the moment they don't have that ability to go quicker maybe Cashiello in 10th place at this point in time, but qualifying numbers expire at the moment, but they will be able to finish those laps. That's going to be key. But at the moment, Harry Melvin will have that pole position, and I'm pretty sure that is it. So, yes, that is it. Harry Melvin will have pole position then here in this one. It'll be Kovac in second and third position then overall for Lee Horn. It will be Vangelis Parginos in fourth, fifth position then come the end for Dezo Shoka and sixth place. We'll go to one Karniang as he's had the early pace in qualifying. Zirai Garunian jumps up to 7th, 8th then for Nate Long come the end of it. Ninth for Sander Havesi and 10th position 
for Davide Casciello. The crucial thing, though, to talk about is the two foils internet ultimately getting foiled at that point here, Alex, and their time's getting deleted from the board from top 10 to now 18th row of the grid. Excellent pun there, Jake. But yes, it is such a shame for the two foils, the two Crest Autosport drivers. But this is where their practice will come into play. This is now all about strategy. Track position and strategy is key at this point. What have the foils got up their sleeves? Will they come and surprise us all? It's a two hour race. It's a long time. You get fresh rubber at least once during this race. You can pit as many times as you want. You can pit once, but you are risking the absolute limits of the tires here. Um, it is certainly worth mentioning that these cars can do about 30 laps worth of fuel, and this will be an approximately 50 lap race. Um, the tires, although they have a 100% or 0% threshold on them, they can exceed 0%. They can go on for longer and longer, and they will still lose time naturally as tires do um, get used more and more. As the drives are out on their warm-up at the moment with three minutes to go, Jake, what will be going through these drivers' minds right now? Well, I'm sure that's a question that you can answer better than I can, but well, it's maybe. all <laughs> about the mentality here today it's all about now okay you've set your times some drivers who didn't get the qualifying that they want they'll have that aggressive mentality of pushing through drivers who are a little bit higher than they thought they would be maybe looking behind them thinking well am i going to be in a position to look behind and see how is this going to affect me can i keep drivers behind me there's so much that goes through these drivers but something that is worth noting we haven't talked about yet Damage is reduced here for this one, of course. That is to do with the longevity of these vehicles being able to run uh, the two hours. The engine really does struggle on that overall, and effectively, it runs itself into trouble. So, reduced damage here today. That's going to be a little bit different. So, maybe drivers have more of a liberty to lean on other drivers. We might see more aggressive racing. Absolutely. I mean, personally, I would take it easy these first two laps. But, you know... What the adrenaline goes through your mind in a situation like this, particularly if you haven't had the qualifying uh, uh, that you wanted. You know, drivers will think, you know what, I'll see if I can make up, make up a few places at the start, utilize on other people's mistakes. But, you know, if it's early on in the race, it is just about getting around Lassos, getting around Eau Rouge, getting into a groove, and letting your strategy and your consistency do the talking here. That is what I would recommend for these drivers right now. Um, you know, you do not win the corner by leading in the first turn. So Harry Melvin may have got pole position, but who knows where he'll come at the end of this race. Maybe the Falls will come and <laughs> through and win. Like Dan Weldon at Indianapolis all them years ago, God bless his soul. You know, from near the back to win that race in Indy. You know, there's, there's all sorts of um, drivers to consider here. There's lots of drivers who are lower down the field that I expected to be quicker. Jeff Perkis, for example, he did very well in both seasons just gone for Exiled. He is way down the order in 25th or 26th in qualifying. Um, we have other drivers uh, such as, well, William Fall and Alex Fall at the bottom, which is such a great shame for them. Fraser Rostens, I was expecting him to get a bit higher because he got fourth place last week in the test race. Not far behind the likes of Choker and Guru Nyan. Um, Thomas Jaeger as well, he didn't do particularly well in qualifying either. That was a huge shock for him. Mind you, last week he was in the Hyundai and this week he's in the Honda. Maybe that car's not suiting him all entirely. Well, we will see if drivers can adapt to certain vehicles if they haven't had enough time on the practices to get themselves what they want. These five minutes are effectively just a case of trying to work out, OK, is the car behaving the way it needs to? Is the balance there? They've only got 15 seconds now before we take ourselves over to the starting grid and ready for two hours worth of racing action. This is going to be a very interesting challenge here today for these ones. And of course, when you have a driver right at the top of the field who's maybe a little bit newer to this sort of field, this sort of battling than we have seen previously, a lot can happen, a lot can change, and pressure is firstly A, going to tell, but strategy is going to be just as important here for this one. So this is going to be key at this moment in time. We are going to see how this is all going to affect them as drivers will now look to grid themselves up on at this moment so we will see how this works 
over the course of racing action. Of course, we welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, over to this, your Exile Virtual Motorsports. And for those who are new, for those who are joining us, welcome very much. And of course, you can always sign up and join the Exiled Virtual Motorsports group. Make sure that you get yourself a look in on that. If you want to come in and join some brilliant racing that is going to be at the forefront here today. But the Audi at the front, the Hyundai alongside. Here we it's go. It's going to be a tough challenge. Here's the grid lining up. Let's get ourselves ready then for this one. The green flag will drop right about now and it's a good start then from Kovacs here off the front row look at the Audi right there. From Lee Horn. horrible start there from the lead there from one Mr uh, Harry there as he goes through Lee Horn has got the run here into turn number one Parginos following behind Shoka there even though Garudian is already up into fourth position Melvin struck down six Gage one back up into mid they make their way to the hill now Early stage of this one, Lee Horn good, but they're battling for the race lead. Side by side they go. It's game from Fashion. Well, Lee Horn, excellent start, but at the Coombe, going wide, Vangelis Parginos, the number one, the defending XR champion, takes the lead early on in this race. Choker with a good start, takes second place. The guys at the front of the grid really not getting what the start that they wanted. Harry Melvin dropped to eighth place. Zoraya Gurunyan also with a good start, gets himself up to fourth place. Digi Kimi, worth mentioning that last week he had a very disappointing race. He retired after an incident in the mid-pack last week, running in fifth place right now. Impressive from him. Van Gallis Parginos has got Choker very close behind him as they come towards the third sector. Can Choker take the lead and take the opening lap as the leader of this race? Jake, take it away. You see that it's two hours five minutes on the clock so an extra five minutes added then onto this race is going to be tough so you've got to get to an hour two an hour three an extra lap more than you expected to at the moment through corner paul frere and on towards blodge spot good run there from pajinos moving through but now you can see here Horn trying to chase garunian and then you've got this battle fifth and sixth uh, this is kan yang under pressure at the moment David Kovacs at the moment in the, uh, uh, in the Hyundai trying to make some progress through at this point in time. Garunian though struggling a little bit as well here. He just pushes a little bit wide and they're going to go on the brakes here into the chicane. No moves though at the front of the field but look at this behind fifth place. The Ang here trying to go around the outside and try and hold the position given. No room on the outside and he gets a slow down penalty for going way too wide and all of a sudden he's going to drop back down a very angry pack at the moment, which is going to be going through. So he's got to really make sure he gets himself in the right position, slow it down and stay out of the way of others. Uh, that'll be a mistake that Jijikimi might, re might regret later in the day, but a move that looked pretty good for fourth place in the chicane for Karnien, but it's just dropped in worse for wear as he drops to sixth place. He has got Nate Long all over the back of him. Is he going to go is he going to go for a move towards Lecom down the Kemmel straight here? He's got the toe, he's got the run. Is he going to go inside? Is it going to be a Hakkinen versus Sch Schumacher situation? He's going to choose the outside by the looks of it. Can't quite get his nose alongside him there. Karnian keeps the position, but in front, it is Kovacs versus Gurunyan. Gurunyan side by side still trying to keep that place, but it looks like a very well executed move from Kovacs there. Kovacs getting himself up into fourth place now, but look at how much it's actually cost them in terms of that battle. They're now a second behind Horn, who is trying to go all over the back of uh, uh, Shoka at this point in time. Shoka getting nice and narrow there is uh, Dejo at this moment in time. He's trying everything to keep himself going. Now, this is what uh, Pajinos wants here in the early stages. He needs to build a gap and he needs to build a gap quickly. These cars are very draft dependent. Missed apex there from Shoka, heading himself there through the double left hand of their Apuha, and that's gonna give an extra tenth to Parginos to get five and a half tenths of a second at the front. The crucial thing is, Parginos wants that gap. He just wants this one to be an easy walk away 
from him, so he gives himself room to be flexible on the strategy. At this point in time, though, someone like Dejo Shoka just wants to stay in the mix. Absolutely. Oh, and he went a bit sideways there. Coming into campus, but Parginos is, uh, is hitting all his marks at the moment, driving as he does usually. He's just slightly pulling away from the field here. Excellent from the number one Greek driver. Lee Horn just at the back of Choker here. Lee Horn will be thinking, this guy looks like he's going to make a mistake, Stu, and he will capitalize on that. But right behind him, Kovacs is actually breaking away from Gurunyan, and he's actually gaining on Lee Horn. Vangelis looked to be looked to have made a mistake in Blanchemont there. The gap closed a little bit. Maybe he ran wide or lost shape a bit, but Choker right behind him now as the gap closed up. Vangel um, Vangelis will hope not to make mistakes like that going forward. Big battle come out of the chicane there, Jake. Vessi, Vessi gets himself a slow down, so that's not going to be helpful for him. He's going to drop miles down the order then. He was in ninth position, so Vessi now has got to try and get himself out of the pack there in uh, the Alfa Romeo, the 2018 Alfa, as he will look to try and now drop back a couple of places. So he's got to be careful about doing that moving forward. But this is crucial to note at the moment. It is a 13-car train here at the front of this field. The gap opens up, though, to Garunian at the moment. But it's on for the race lead. Look at this. One, yeah. two, three, and four. All pushing through. All trying to chase down Shoka. Shoka trying to get past Vangelis Parginos here at the front of the field. Parginos is now going to have to need to defend here as he goes uh, holding that inside line. There goes the Honda trying to go around the outside to make this one work. He's been so good in the mid to late, and he's got the position oh. for the race lead. Marginos, though, still having to defend. He'll try and come back in him, though, here at this Malmody corner. Here Looking comes Kovacs. And this is going to be a tough little fight here down the hill at Ravage, and they're going to lean on each other through this section. Oh. Marginos has him, but there's going to be cut back to cut back. Overs and unders, more than pretty much knitting. Classic touring car racing there as Choker's trying to get back at the inside of Vangelis. Brilliant, brilliant defending from Vangelis. We thought he had it all lost there, but he's managed to get it back. It's a four-way battle for the lead now. Gurunyan trying to catch up as Choker goes wide. Can Lee Horn capitalise on this? Probably not just yet, but that will give Van Gellis the advantage in this sector. It seems Choker is struggling through Puhan at the moment. Maybe the Honda is not well suited for that corner, but elsewhere on the track, Choker seems very, very well grounded. See how much he's pushing here through the Fania Chicane. He's got almost all four tyres off the road, trying to maximise the apex or effectively cutting it on the inside as he's been going through. Keep an eye out, though, on a couple of battles elsewhere in the field. You've got this one going on for 12th, 11th, 10th, and onwards. You've got Rostens and uh, you've got the likes here of uh, Davide Casciello uh, trying to battle. There's Tamas Jaeger in 10th place. They're still very much in the mix. Anybody right now still has that ability. Some drives may be going quick, some may not, but here's a little scrap going on here at the front of the field, so they're still going on, but got side by side through Blanchman almost. There's that Sandor Havesi after the slowdown, trying to get himself back past Nate Long into 8th place here, and look at this, some Noah's Art racing, because now suddenly here comes Schrodinger's overtake, off into the defence, the Honda trying to get through a Tamash Jaeger, not finding it, and now for 4th position, they start to change up a little bit right now, Horns having to defend into the Lassell's hairpin. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is a 2 hour 5 minute race, this is lap 4, they're racing like it's lap 44. Oh, it's so good, isn't it? As Digikimi makes a great move on Harry Melvin to take back sixth place. Um, and just going back to our story at the beginning of the race, the foils disconnected at the start of the server and managed to get back in. William Foyle has got up to 23rd place from starting 35th place. Keep an eye on William Foyle at the moment. He is charging his way through the field. He's got two wide in front of him, though. Jonas Lindberg at the moment having to fall back into line he was going through and that was of course with Jeff Perkis there trying to make some progress forward but once more back to the front of the field their nose to tail as they head up through the camel through the left right of the Lay Coombe section and Garunian now up into fourth place because Lee Horn has dropped back two places into fifth position overall he's lost positions both to uh, uh, Garunian and to Kovacs as well. So that's going to be a bit of hurt at the moment. And now you've got to wonder here about Harry Melvin in seventh because he's the man who's got the fastest one lap pace in this field. He's proven that by two tenths of a second. Race pace may be different, but if he can keep himself in touch with these race leaders and he's only get this almost two seconds back off of the race lead outright in seventh, he's got a chance. Why take that wide line 
there he is well with Yang in front so we'll see how this one goes on as the Brit and the Finn battle it out here for fifth and sixth and they're side by side behind I believe that is uh Cashiello trying to get by Jaeger uh, I think it was Jaeger getting by Cash uh, getting by Cashiello but it's now a four-way battle for that position. Vessi very much holding up Nate Long here. They might start catching Melvin and um, Niang, but Niang is very much dropping back from the car in front of Lee Horn as he is battling with Melvin. But uh, we can just start to see these, uh, these individual battles breaking the field up a little bit. This is the point in the race where tire wear will start to come into play. Tires uh, just sort of getting near that slower than optimal pace as the field will split up. So Gurunyan alongside with Lee Horn going into the chicane, formerly known as the bus stop. It's still a bus stop in our opinion. Gurunyan goes a bit wide. Can Lee Horn get the undertake as he nearly cuts off the nose of Karnian? He's got a good run coming out of last source. Will he go up the inside of Gurunyan? Yes, he will give it a go. Huge switch to get there. Late break in, going into last source. Not quite late enough, Gurunyan holds his own. He takes a yep. wider line and stays in front as the battle between um, Karnian and Melvin right behind is still commencing. Yeah, it absolutely is. You can see it right now here, Nyang under pressure has got to stay in that draft, that slipstream if he wants to keep himself in line. They can see the Alfa Romeo up the hill, the Audi looking every which way to try and make positions, but it's also on here for second. This could be one, two for Hyundai at the moment as Kovacs tries to get past his compatriot Shoka as they look on the brakes then into the right left of Lekoum. This is the prime overtaking opportunity, not close enough to make a move, but very much hit the wall, so to speak, in terms of uh, clean air, dirty air, and had no real push to go forward. Garunian holding on against Lee Horn, and they can see behind everybody else staying pretty much line astern at this moment in time. A few gaps started to go here, some side-by-side -side action going on right now, and it's the link between Gorik in 17, trying to get past uh, Gyrkus in 16 in the Honda, gets himself down to the inside, and that is a clean move, and are we going to see Team Warfare come in as we get two links, one and two? Nope, the second link, struggling to find a way through there, the Jackie into corner, formerly a corner without a name. And I very much thought Stanov was going to get up the inside of Gurkhas then. But look who's behind Stanov. It's foil. But Gurkhas goes wide yet again, losing another position to the link. The Ukrainians working together very well here as William Foyle is going to capitalize and try and gain yet another position in his charge towards the front. Round the outside as he goes into the chicane. Will he keep the inside into the next corner? It looks like he will. And he goes... I'm Yes, excellent move from William. It must be anger spurring him on as his disconnection happened at the latter part of qualifying. He could not set a lap, but he is charging through the field. He is now halfway up. This is a tremendous charge from the Brit. It absolutely is. You cannot argue against it. Some brilliant work. It's still on, though, for the race lead here. As Vangelis Pargino still having to defend into corners. It's pretty much how close can you get on the brakes. As here's some side-by-side -side as Melvin's going to try and run it deep in. Yang's going to get close, but ultimately no contact between the two there as they push through this section and look to try and go and attack once more. So getting a little bit bogged down and frustrated here is Harry Melvin. He's got to stay patient here. Can't win the race from this position onwards, but he certainly can lose it. And now look behind him here as here comes a Vessi wow. down the inside who steals a position away from the Audi. That was a classic Formula One move, <laughs> even though he's in a touring car. The Alfa Romeo of Vessi making a great move up the inside of Melvin. Melvin caught, it caught napping, it seems, getting frustrated, focusing on the car in front when he should be equally as focused on the car behind, particularly in corners like that. Melvin dropping like a fly at the moment. Pole position is now in eighth place and looks like he is struggling to keep his ground. At the front, Parginos is defending, helping out his fellow Hyundai with pay, uh, well, the slipstream. They're alongside. Oh. Nice, nice and narrow, and all of a sudden, by being so narrow through that section, attack turns to defense, and Kovacs now trying to find a way through, and this is the key. They're holding each other up right now. Parginos, I don't think, has enough top end to break away from this pack. He's being kept honest, and all of a sudden, 
Ronian and Horn have been dragged back into this fight because they are attacking so much. So, now this is the key as well here, Alex, when you talk about this. First of all, to show Group Kovac to attacking so much and taking so many different lines. They're going to be using up their tyres a lot more than Parginos is at this point in time. Excellent point, Jake. You have made a very good point there. Um, six laps in. I think we'll see another six laps at least before people start going into the pits for tyres. But as you said, they, the more they are fighting, the more their tyres will wear away. Carginas might be in the best position for that at the moment. It does look like Choker is struggling. He, is, he seems to be worrying about Kovacs behind him. Probably aware that these guys could be potentially teammates in the two Hyundais uh, with the... BRC livery on them as all wide goes Choker using every bit of the road a bit of frustration in this part of the track we already said earlier Parginos is very good on this section of the track but these guys slowing up it seems Garunian and Horn are slightly gaining on this pack at the front this could be another big crocodile of cars eventually if these guys at the front start battling again Jake well, they've got to be careful here, and they've got to make sure it goes. And there goes Lee Horn down to the inside. And oh, he's caught oh. back there as he tags the back of Kovacs. But he's going to go straight on and jump, lose a whole boatload of places. In fact, he drops back to eighth place then after that one. So a nightmare corner. He just missed his breaking point by a good 15 metres there. And Horn trying to be overly aggressive has now paid the price with a whole number of positions. Here comes uh, Havesi trying to dive down the inside. There's more contact there. Garunian's running wide as well it go through and now it's opened up Pandora's box here comes the charge up the hill the Messi all of a sudden was in seventh position he's now going to four and a slow down for Peter Jacob back all the way in uh, it is 27th place sadly for him but focusing back on this battle Havesi really really doing well here he has lost the ground from a little bit from Digikimi and Lee Horn behind him, uh, sorry, not Lee Horn, uh, Melvin behind him, but Havesi trying to get at the inside of Garunian, but Garunian holds his own. But look how much they've dropped from the front pack, Jake. A huge amount of time lost just in a few corners of battling and a little bit of contact. Garunian didn't seem to be, you know, in a battle per se, but he's made, he was probably looking at it behind him, worrying about it and made a mistake ultimately. And that has cost these guys the momentum from that pack at the front. Two seconds. Tamash Yeager is going to lose a position potentially here because this is Nate Long trying to fight back here in the Volkswagen, trying to go around the outside of the Honda. And he's got it done around the outside of Speaker's Corner, the Jackie Inks Corner, it's now known. That's a brilliant overtake. And Yeager may try and get this one back. But ultimately, the Honda does struggle through this fast for the right-hander. And now here's a little bit of trouble for the race leaders right now. One, two, and three, Hyundai, Hyundai, Honda. But they've got lap traffic in front already. And that should be uh, the driver in front of them of Petter Nystrom at the moment, who has already fallen a lap down in the PWR racing car. So he is now going to be a driver who I'm pretty sure with the exiled way, which is often trademarked in races like these here, uh, Alex, out of the way pretty quickly. Yes, I believe so. Petter, having raced with him for a long time, very fair racer. I don't think he is going to get in these guys' way here. The opportunity will be... At the sh after the chicane, but um, Van Gelis will have this on his mind. He will be hoping that the Seat Cooper in front of him will not disrupt his race. As we look at the Hyundai, he took a look. At it. He taken a look. Oh, Go back. Look at this behind it. Three wide with Garunian and Co. And oh, Khan Yang with a little bit of contact going through. He's going to try and hold it around the wow. outside here. Danov will get a slow down penalty. That's irrelevant. But at this point in time, Khan Yang up to fourth and here they're going to fight here for the race lead looking into turn one not close enough so Nyang up into fourth place but Parginos all of a sudden they're having to deal with the lap trap who just about gets out of the way look at this for the race lead the two Hyundais going at it oh this is excellent racing Karnian gaining two positions on that lap excellent from him Gurunyan gets a slow down penalty running way too wide coming out of last source but let's keep an eye on this front pack the Hyundai will it have a good exit out of Eau Rouge it does look like it has here we come, down towards Le Coombe. On the Campbell Strait. Here come... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Kovacs go to the outside. Oh, this is brilliant stuff between them here on the brakes, trying to go the long way round. Trying to get the inside for the second half. Marginos is going to try and give everything 
around this. He's got the inside for the next two corners, though. That's the key to this. He's got the inside. They stay side by side. But look at that superior traction wow, on the outside. Good. David Kovacs takes the lead. And, oh, down the inside looks Joker trying to take the advantage. And you know what? He's only gone and done it as well. Up into second. Suddenly, it's a Hungarian one, two, and four. Wow. Well, Van Gallis might feel hard done by that move by Choker, it, but it was phew, it, it was a daring move from Choker nonetheless. But Hungarian 1-2 at the moment. Van Gallis will need to sort his head out a little bit here. He might be a little bit frustrated. He just needs to get his head down, hit his marks like he has done all race, and maybe think about the pit stops that are coming up. That may be when he gets the jump. Hevesi has moved back into fourth place ahead of Kanyen. Kanyen absolutely fantastic race so far i will be honest i did not expect this from him this is an incredible outing for the finish driver and melvin looks to be getting back into the swing of things up to sixth place he did drop to eighth place at one point he is finding his way back up slowly but surely davide castello is joining the party as well he has been keeping quiet in this race but creeping up and up little by little has been so watch out for Casciello at the moment he's up now into seventh position here at this moment in time that's going to be the key to him at the moment he's just been picking off drivers one after the other and remember he's in the 2019 alpha compared to the two 2018 alphas that he's got in front of him on the brakes into the final chicane once again wide goes Nyang and now look at this here from Melvin trying to pick up an up and under attempt going on they're fanning out here terms of this battle these four have that lap traffic to deal with of Nystrom just in front so watch out for this then as they go on the brakes as Casciello down the inside he's going to pick up another one then on the Audi there he moves himself up in sixth place they are still fighting and Yang has got himself down the inside of car 88 Sander Havesi but Havesi using the downhill section they'll have the inside for the first part here of Eau Rouge and Rally and are they going to go too wide yes they are contact through the first part but they get themselves through okay Sander Havesi then Oh, what's finish, happened? What's happened? From Yang, he's gone around and he's had a huge slide moment. And you can see just how much it's cost him. Oh no, that is not what we wanted to happen to Car Nien. I was just about to say we should rename the chicane the Car Nien chicane because fa some fantastic moves have been pulled off from him in that chicane today. But all that momentum is lost. Just a little bit too much turn into Eau Rouge, making contact with Havesi and losing what well it, it appears that he has had suspension damage now as he drops down the order uh, that is gutting from him hopefully he can repair it in good time in the pits which shouldn't be too far away now it shouldn't be too far away you're starting to open up the door maybe for a three-stop strategy in the next 10 minutes or so so this is going to be a long four lap limp would feel for Digi Kimi to stay on strategy. The other thing he could do is convert this into a three-stop strategy, but go to two-stop distances, maybe. That might be something just to keep in mind, actually, Alex, because he may just have to come down early and maybe he's got a splash and dash split to try and go to finish off the race. He certainly has the pace to pull that off, Jake, certainly. I think um, it now is not the time to be panicking. Uh, you are absolutely right. So, uh, Digi doesn't seem to be losing many more places, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, he's just lost a place to Tonga Guardia, the Argentinian in the Volkswagen. But, um, yeah, you can see there's a lot of damage on that front left. I think we will expect a pit stop from Kanyen at the end of this lap. But, yeah, there's a long way to go still. If he can repair that damage in enough time, it's worth him getting that done, getting out on fresh rubber, taking a three-stop strategy to maintain the high pace, getting back out there, hitting his marks, and trying to get back up the order because there is no denying that others in this race may make mistakes as well. Well, they certainly can make mistakes. We have seen a few here and there, but this is going to be some really tough battling at the moment, and we still have these battles going on at the moment. Gap at the front now, almost eight tenths of a second now for Kovacs over Shoka. We'll keep that in mind as the one second has been reached, but you've got some brilliant work going on here in this midfield. You've got this battle going on for 15th place, though, at the moment. You've got Zagia there, who's trying to find a way past the limping Karnyang. And there's William Boyle in the background. Contact through turn one as they go through. Boyle there having to go defensive from uh, Victor Gorick just behind as well, so keep that in mind. William Boyle up to 16th place, and he is not a million of miles away uh, from the race lead overall. He has done well to keep that uh, average lap time up through the traffic. 
Certainly not. Well, his best lap is at 32.9 at the moment. And considering he's been batting a lot in this race, that's not bad. The fastest lap of the race, however, has been set by David Kovacs. I'm not sure what lap he set it, but it is a 31.8 on race pace. That's impressive. But I believe Kovacs actually has a little less ballast than the rest of these drivers. Just on driver's pace in previous exiled races, this, this might be very good news for Kovacs as he's breaking away from Choker. Choker also breaking away from Parginos in third place. It is very much breaking up at the moment, and this is the point where people will now put their focus not to track position, but to the pit strategies that they have in play today, if they have any play. Let's hope no one's winging it today. But um, yeah, certainly, let's, let, it's certainly worth checking who's going to come in in the next two to three laps who will undoubtedly probably be going for the three stop strategy it is worth keeping an eye on that well it is worth keeping an eye out on some of these battles here is at this point in time keep an eye on this for 11th and 12th this is tamash yeager under pressure from simone guido who's made some good progress here in this race but it's on behind them look at this uh, here's kanyang contact going through the second part of Fania and that is everyone into the grass and the gravel they're going through that's the 18 uh, making way through a foil but he's going to lose out to Zagia now uh, heading through that section oh huge oh. slide there from Zagia going through and all of a sudden it starts to get a little bit bunched up there's got oh. background bang foil into the tires and he's pretty much out of that race there and he gets a huge kick coming out of corner Paul Frere he's in oh, all no. sorts of trouble and out Oh no, and Zagba taking out his teammate, rejoining the track. Game over for the two um, KCMG Hondas there. Zagba reversing back onto the track. I'm not sure what, what he thought of doing there, but he's taking out his teammate Gurkos, both missing lots of bodywork. That was a terrible rejoin from um, Zagba there. But Foil very much foiling everybody there as he gets up to 14th place. Um, and Digikimi Kanyan not giving up, it seems. He is still fighting hard to keep his ground despite what could be suspension issues on his car as he goes into last source alongside with Victor Gorick. Yeah, he's trying everything, but Gorick at the moment doing a good job to hold off that battle at the moment. It's worth noting at the front of the field, the gap is up to an entire second at this point in time here between Kovacs and Shoka at this point. So that's going to be key. Parginos has dropped back. He's 2.2 seconds down the road. Same for Hevesi, 2.2 seconds down the road at the moment. The next big battle uh, going on right now is this one, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and it's all behind Harry Melvin at this point in time. You've got David, uh, Davide Casciello in there. You've got Zirai Garunian at the moment who's in there right now. Lee Horn on the back and if they're not too careful and they start holding each other up there's Fraser Rostens and Nate Long just sitting back there waiting in both the Audi and the Volkswagen respectively trying to get themselves in top five definitely not out of the way just yet into the next question to ask though how important is the undercut going to be today Alex well it's certainly the best track to try the undertake last source is a prime example Maybe try Eau Rouge, where you can, in these touring cars, take the car wide and get an undercut as you go down, uh, sorry, up the Kemmel Hill to the Kemmel Strait. Um, yeah, it is certainly the best track for it. Um, a lot of sweeping corners where you can utilize the grip on the outside of the corner. Um, yeah, you go. Let's have a look at him. Explosion, oh. but not quite there. And now look behind that as well. There is. That's someone who stayed very quiet so far in this race. Tonga Guardia, he's just been quietly accruing positions one after the other after the other there, the Argentine. And he may be on for a very strong finish, maybe a top 10 in the offing here. If consistency continues like this, hasn't been aggressive, has just been sitting, waiting, biding the time. This may be the run he wants. He's got double time. Absolutely. Looking very much like he wants this position from Jaeger, the winner of the test race last week. Is he going to find his way up the inside of Blanchemont? Not quite. It might be the bus stop chicane. Tonga Guardia, one of our two transatlantic drivers today. And he He's not on the brakes, trying to go around the outsides. Going to work, is it here? Trying to get back. No, oh! it's not going to work. Bang, huge contact. And Guardia and co going around there. Seems like Guardia is starting to lag spike ever so slightly, but. There you can see Guardia, big contact, and this is key as well. Keep an eye on Parginos here. I believe he has come down into the lane to make his stop, so he has gone very aggressive in the early stages here. This is a big three-stop call. Parginos on the three. 
Yes, and as they started lap 12, this is a little bit early from Parginos, and there's someone else who's coming in the pits as well. I believe it's, well, uh, well um, Giampi Giampiero de Raya is in the pits as well. There's a yellow Cooper in there as well of Jonas Lindbergh. But Parginos on his way out of the pits right now. Now, this will be... This is the time to keep an eye on these pit strategies. Now, Parginos has come in, which means he's going to have fresh rubber now, which means he can do as fast a lap times as possible and potentially on less fuel as well, which means he might use the time advantage now to get jump on Kovacs and Choker, who were in front of him originally. It is worth mentioning also that Melvin has got his way ahead of Gurunyan and Castello in the last couple of laps. Uh, maybe just Castello, but also, of course, he jumped the position from Parginos going in the pits but Melvin looking like he is on the charge to walk back towards that top spot that he held temporarily for not a very long time earlier on on the first lap of the race well the crucial fact is all about Havesi at the moment who has uh, got himself now into 25th position uh, at this point in time so he has dropped down the order at this point in time I'm not sure whether that was a pit stop or not Alex I don't know if you have the ability to see that but Sander Havesi at the moment uh, finds himself now in 25th place at this point in time so he'll be looking to try and make that I think it was a stop for Havesi there so he's behind Parginos by a little bit so a longer stop from him there that tells you all you need to know right now is Lee Horn currently looking at a net top five on the road here to try and get by Karunia. Absolutely. Great battling between these two so far in the race. And Lee Horn has got a little bit of help from his next-gen teammate behind him. The Audi's running very well in this race in indeed. But Gurunyan, not quite as far up. Not quite as competitive as I thought he was going to be. But a long way to go. Well, in comes Kovacs then, so the Hyundais are going early to make their calls. That releases Shoka into the race lead now as Cash Yellow continues and likes of Melvin and Co. all diving down onto the lane. So this is going to be crucial. A lot of drivers coming to make their pit then with an hour and 34 minutes to go. It seems today that three stop might just be the call for a lot of drivers. I think so. Well, the three stopper is the obvious choice because your tires get to about 0% at about lap 12 or 13. So a lot of drivers will go for that for safety because once your tires hit 20%, in fact, they do seem to drop off a cliff. So Kovacs leaves his pit stall now. Let's compare him to Parginos. Let's see where he is. Parginos coming around last source now. Kovacs has made it out. Parginos seems to have lost time from his pit stop. He will not be happy about that. He will definitely not. They can see Kovacs at the moment making his way up the hill, doing a great job as he climbs up and looks towards the next section of road here that he goes to try and see. And he will know that he has got himself the advantage. Now you start to see where the strategies come into play because you've got someone like Shoka, for example, who did have to spend a lot of time behind a lot of drivers. That's good for the fuel saving as drivers stay behind and may choose not to make moves. It may also be good for drivers who are trying to make sure that their strategy games are going to be on key with tyres and tyre conservation. So we'll see how this one works at the moment as Lukas Dzerski is going to have himself mirrors full of one Mr. Kovacs, who is now going to have to try and force a way through. Here's the downside, the caveat to what goes on if you're picking in early. You have to get by drivers who may be slightly slower. This is where you get held up. Precisely the point, as Dereski is holding him up. Kovacs will be thinking, get out of my way, Dereski, as he goes up the inside of Lucas, going into Puan. Excellent, well-executed move from Kovacs. Dereski not quite getting in the way. As Alex Foyle, currently 12th place, despite all the pit stops from some of the drivers at the moment, making his way up the grid as well. With Kovacs, very much good uh, work from him there as Parginos catches up on these two. He'll be hoping that these two go in the pits fairly quickly as he tries to catch up with Kovacs. It seems he has gained a little bit of ground on Kovacs in that battle that he was, the Hungarian was involved in just then. Well, it's also worth putting this in mind. Sander Havesi, who came in from fourth position, mind you, he's now dropped behind uh, Garunian at this point. So Jirai Garunian has jumped up ahead of Sander Havesi. So this is going to be key, just to keep in mind. In comes uh, Dejo Shoka from the race lead, and he is followed in by Cash Yellow. This will put Nate Long 
at the front of the field for the moment. So this is a key here that we're looking at right now. It is going to be the Volkswagens then who are traditionally going to be staying out then in this race because the first, second and third cars at this point in time are all Volkswagen. So Team Volkswagen, they are going for the two stop at least. Yeah, my boys at Crest Auto Sport going for it. For going for the the the, uh, the long run, it seems. Uh, covering up my eyes at the moment, hoping it pulls off for them. No commentators uh, bias there, of course. But Nate Long staying out. It looks like the the Volkswagens and I think the Persia of Jeff Perkis perhaps will uh, seem to be going for either a two-stop strategy or even a one-stop strategy, Jake, which is very risky indeed particularly the pace of some of these drivers right now but running a two-stop strategy your time will just come down and down and down as your tires wear more and more this is the point where we're going to see nate long william foyle who's in second place by the way and tonga guardia setting very very slow lap times in comparison to the likes of um choker and parginos and kovacs who will be doing very quick times right now on their fresh rubber well, it's worth noting where Choker has actually come out because he is uh, now in ninth position here oh. on the road. That's key because he is behind Parginos and also Kovacs with a car in the middle being Alex Foyle. So he's dropped back maybe three seconds through that on the overcut strategy. So it's not worked out here for Shogun going a couple of laps longer. has not paid off, but here's the caveat to the overcut right now. To say you go longer, you've got fresher tyres, you can use those as Victor Gorek gets himself a slow down penalty for going a little bit too aggressive here with the track limits, but crucially we're at this point where we start getting the calculators out here alex and saying well if this person's here he needs x if that person's there he needs y if the third person's here he needs z yeah absolutely yeah um it's interesting that you mentioned track limits i think it's also worth mentioning a little bit more drama that could be at play here is incident point limits there is an instant point limit here in this race of 100 and i'm looking at the instant point limit on um the server here there are drivers who are in 40 at the moment jake we're we're not really near halfway yet and that could come into crucial play later on when there is more battling and battling in the final phases of the race where people want the highest position possible. Well, talking about that, David Kovacs has made a way past the Persia of Jeff Perkins, but he's run very, very deep, trying to get one done. You know what? Perkins is going to try and come back at him. Fair play to him as behind in comes Carancini in to make a stop. So that's going to be key to see that one go out. But Kovacs is going to hold on against the Persia, but fair play to Jeff. He gave that one a red hot go and has tried to hold up uh, the Hyundai a little bit towards uh, to the other Hyundai there of Pajinos, but that's going to be crucial as well to keep in mind here is that these drivers in the early stages here, Alex, they would have had themselves maybe a little bit more worries with the instant points. It's a lot more bunched together. It's a lot easier to pick those up. Now that the field's spreading out and the first stops are coming in, would it be right to say that instant points are going to be less prevalent from this point onwards? You're absolutely right there, Jake. You will see you'll get incident points only for running wide at this point, particularly if the field is spreading out. But what you will be very worried about is people running into you causing instant points. That is what these drivers will be running um, worried about right now. But as the field splits up, we will see a lot less contact causing instant point limits. But the current driver probably with the most instant points limp, instant points at the moment on 75 is is Adam Jaeger. Um, that might have been a lot down to that incident that happened earlier on um, through Stavlot, as his car is somewhat repaired now, his front bumper's back on anyway. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a at some point in this race there will be some focus on instant point limit but it seems to be the bat the, the big battles we are watching are the ones that have got the most instant points great entertainment guys great drama but not very sustainable in the long run but let's see if the the count will calm down as time goes by now well this is going to be key a few drivers have actually lost quite a bit of time over the course of this one by the way that they've stopped harry melvin for example he's back in 15th place at the moment and he finds himself behind Leenberg 
out there. And remember that Lindbergh did come in and make a stop. So uh, Jonas Lindbergh going a lot more aggressive, maybe a lot more fuel taken. Melbourne and there's spinning. a huge slide going through. <laughs> He's going to just about save it. So uh, getting a bit of the Tokyo going on there did Harry Melvin through that one. Other drivers were miles down the order. Rostens and Horn, 24th and 25th in the Audis. It seems like they have gone really long on their stops. Absolutely. Nate Long, William Foyle, Tonga Guardia of the Volkswagen Crestor Sport Team. And I think Alex Foyle you can put into that equation as well. They are going for two stoppers, it seems. They have passed 15, 16 laps. Now, if they're going to go for a two-stop strategy, now, there's a couple of ways of which they can do this. You can e they can either come in in the first third or you know, 40% of the race and get new rubber and then get fuel later, or they'll get fuel uh, they'll, they would have gone out with less fuel at the start of the race and they'll take on more fuel as they go for the long run towards the end but um expect expect the volkswagens to come in for tires soon well, here's another Volkswagen who's lost a position. That is uh, Girard Garunian going past Alexander Foyle. So Foyle drops himself back. Another one on the two-stop strategy there, trying to make it work. And ultimately, he drops back just a little bit. So this is going to be key then to see how this race goes on. A few drivers pitting here and there are going to be in that strategy. But we've hit that limit where nobody coming in, nobody's all there. So they're staying out, all having their strategies run to a number and it's often talked about here when you get to racing like this you always have to try and hit a number around these tracks and that number becomes key what's also key is that leader of the two stops nate long has himself seven seconds over william Foyle at the moment a 233 that last time by from nate long you compare that to william Foyle, that was a 232.9 so there's four tenths difference Foyle is trying to close down the gap Absolutely, Foil is really, really, really st stamping his foot down to try and get the most out of that car. But the thing to look at right now is David Kovacs is setting 231.8 at the moment with Van Gelis on that last lap and a very disappointing 32.4, but a 31.8 at the moment for Kovacs. And that's only going to stay around about that mark. Nate Long is setting 233.8 at the moment. Uh, sorry, 0.3 at the moment. So he's losing nearly two seconds per lap here. And I will be honest, Jake, he hasn't that got that big a gap from Kovacs as um, Nate Long just exits uh, Blanchemont toward, going towards the bus stop chicane now. Kovacs is heading towards Blanchemont now. The pit stops are at least including the pit lane, about 50 seconds. Nate Long is not in a good position here. It, unless the strategy pays off later where he has got 50 seconds less, let's, let's say, in the pits later on in the race, I'm not sure if it's working at the moment. Maybe, the, maybe we just need to be patient about this two-stop strategy. It's quite hard to tell. It is at this point in time, but this is worth keeping in mind at the moment. Kovacs has pulled his gap out to Parginos here to almost four seconds at the moment. And in fact, Parginos is looking behind him at Shoka here, who's closing down that gap just tenth by tenth. He's got that gap down to 1.4, 1.2 seconds now at the moment out on track. So this is going to be where the key comes in. At this moment, it might just be a case that Shoka is starting to put himself back into this race and it's good on the early stages here of the stint. So keep an eye out on what's going on here at this point in time. A couple drivers here and there dropping down the order. Perkis is one of them. He's going to come in and make his two-stop little slow out of the box there. He almost stalled it there, it almost seemed like, as he tried to get the Peugeot going. He is one of the only Peugeots in this field up near the top. Dzeski now gets himself ahead, but Perkis out and away. He's got one stop to go in an hour and 22 minutes. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's right. It looks like Perkis has gone for the two-stop strategy. He, re re uh, he rejoins the track around 20th place. If we consider the other pit stops, might be a little bit higher up the field. But yeah, it is certainly interesting seeing so many drivers taking the three-stop strategy. We know the three-stop strategy is going to be longer in terms of how long you're in the pits and you're losing a lot of time there and less track time. But the two-stop strategy is 
Look at this, Alex, because this is William Foyle. He's under pressure from Kovacs already. Ooh. That one-stop margin has been erased before he's even come down in and made that stop. Remember, eight seconds to Nate Long. So that two-stop, if you've only got eight seconds of a margin around here, you've got to have a really good overcut coming through the next thing. They can see down the inside of corner, Paul Frere, and up back into second now goes Kovacs. If that's not a message here to Foyle and Long Guardia, that says Pitt now. Well... Let's think about it this way. If Kovacs is on a three-stop strategy, so he's going to come in yet for tyres and fuel, and yet again for tyres, William Fall is supposedly on a two-stop strategy at the moment. He'd be taking exactly the same thing. They are neck and neck right now, with Foyle losing the time. This is advantage Kovacs right now against the Volkswagens. The Keep one... Long. Long's in the pits. This looks like a two-stop strategy then from Nate Long. So this would be just for tyres, I presume. Well, in comes yes. Long, in comes Foyle. That's going to be crucial to keep an eye on. Guardia stays out another lap in the Volkswagen. So the Argentine will continue on. But Kovacs resumes control of the race lead here, ladies and gentlemen. And it is on for the podium at this point in time. Because Dejo Shoka has caught back up to Parginos pretty quickly. As Hungary versus Greece becomes the battle on offing. At this point in time, up the hill they go, through O'Rouge, the left in Karadion, and now here they go towards this next section. Crucially for Parginos, at this point in time though, get an eye on this. He's got Guardia's draft, six tenths of a second, and all of a sudden, they all encroach on each other. That's right, and the Honda looking for a gap at the inside, not quite enough of a pull on Parginos to make the move there, but Let's bear in mind that Parginos always oh, made the mistake trying to get up the inside of Tonga Guardia there. He's going to go up the inside, going into the hairpin. Yep, Tonga Guardia. Well, but well, he, I thought he was getting out of the way, but it seemed to put him back into place. The uh, the, uh, the um, perhaps high ping there from Guardia, but uh, Choker getting held up now by the Argentine. Parginos breaking away. This is how important getting past drivers is at a track like Spa. You will lose time straight away because it's such a fast track. But, um, yep, Choker still can't yeah. find its way past Guardia. This is crucial for Choker right now. And it's tougher when you've got a car and you don't know whereabouts you're battling it, as is such the latency issues that you're seeing around the outside is going to push it. And that is pretty much the only way he was going to make that move down at Vanya. So a great change of position. Then Shoka has dropped himself, though, 1.2 seconds in terms of what he wanted. All that work he's been doing, he's got to do all over again. Melvin's got away by Lindbergh. So he gets himself now up into ninth place. And I do want to really give a shout out there to Jonas Lindbergh over the strategy in that Cupra because by being one of the first to come in, really did take advantage of that undercut and it is really paying off in spades. Great point, Jake. Yes, he's in the top 10 now, J Jonas Lienberg, and I, I think he was about 20th place before the pit stop. That's an excellent execution of strategy there from the Swede as he is right behind Harry Melvin and seems to have the upper hand on him. Let's see how Lienberg gets on later in the race. This might be a stroke of genius from the Swede. It absolutely could be. So Jonas Lienberg, keep an eye on that yellow uh, DHL Cooper. It seems like he's delivered a great result at this point in time. But you've also got to keep yourself in mind on those drivers who are out there who maybe haven't yet uh, decided to make the decisions that they have needed to at this point in time. I am wondering here, uh, has Khan Yang actually come in and made a stop yet? Uh -oh. For once, I'm speechless, Jake. Um, I'm not actually sure. Worth keeping an eye on that. Um, I, I'll, I'll go fishing for the data now, but Kanyan, I, I was just thinking, yeah, before you said that, he's in seventh place at the moment. Has he picked up some ground somewhere? If he's made a pit stop and made up all that ground, he's quite a long way behind Havesi, but not bad from the Finn at the moment, despite the drama he had about half an hour ago. Well, about half an hour ago, he was in all sorts of trouble down in 14th place. He finds himself in seventh, and he is a full quarter of a minute behind Sander Havesi, who is in sixth place right now. And actually get an eye out on uh, Havesi at this point in time, because he's not too far away from Garunian here, who's just in front there in the blue link there in fifth place. The gap is one and a half seconds. In fact, Garunian has gone to Narnia and back, and all of a sudden, the gap's six tenths. Absolutely, yeah. As Garunian 
trying to get his way past the Seat there. The Seat gets out of the way. That's very, very good from him there. Avesti, uh, before the pit stops, he was quite a long way behind Garunian. There was a bit of battling between him and Garunian before, uh, before the pit stop. But yeah, Garunian will, will be looking at that pack in front, you know, wondering if he's missed out on an opportunity. He was getting involved in some battles early on. Um, is strategy going to help him at this point? Well, I think we've quickly established which drivers have got the best strategy and which stri drivers have executed it at best at the moment. Well, we certainly have seen that here, and it seems that the moment that uh, Girard Garunian needs a lion, a witch, and a wardrobe to try and hold back uh, Havesi at this point in time as they make their way through towards Blanchemont. This is one of the highest speed sections of the track. If you get it wrong through here, yes, you've got runoff, but it used to be all gravel there on the outside. And I can always remember Luciano Berti's massive shunt that he had here in the early 2000s, 01, 02, that sort of era. But you can see car 100 against car 88. And on the brakes they will go here. And there's a look to the inside by the Alfa Romeo. And that is as comfortable as you like. The link had absolutely nothing on the brakes. Well, Havesi's, um, I, he's got something in that car that perhaps Gurunyan doesn't have, but a sitting duck there was Zariah as an excellent move from Havesi there to take fifth place at the moment as he charges towards the yet to pit Tonga Guardia. Tonga Guardia, I believe, is the only one in this field, apart from the uh, the conspiracy of um, Karnien, of course. Tonga Guardia. Yeah, I, I, I presume he has. He's quite a long way behind Gurunyan at the moment, but Tonga Guardia seems to be the only one at the moment who hasn't pitted. Is he going for a one-stop strategy? Now, if he's going for a one-stop strategy, yeah, well, if he's going for a one-stop, all he, he needs to lose about 50 seconds out on track. Could this be Tonga Guardia's race, you know? Because 50 seconds is a lot of time to lose on a one. As long as he doesn't make any mistakes, and I say that, he's just gone a little bit wider the chicane there. But this could be a stroke of genius from the Argentine driver. It certainly could be. He's got Havesi, who's only 1.3 seconds back. He's lost a second a lap to Shoker over the last couple of laps. So you talk about this being a 50 lap race. If pace continues like that, he'll lose 30 seconds. But remember, he's going to gain a lot on the tyres when drivers come in. Here's the battle going on, though. Back at Casciello goes Leanberg, but he's going to have to go straight on here at the Lacombe chicane. And he drops all the time back. And that's where the older tyres are starting to hurt Leanberg here. Remember, he was one of the first to come down in and make that stop. And all of a sudden now, that gap is 1.7 in front and 1.8 behind. There's Alexi Stanov. We haven't talked much about him in 12th position, the second of the links in this field. Absolutely. We are we are at 40% through this race. So we've got another, oh, I would say, three to five laps before we start seeing people come back in. But you mentioned Leenberg was one of the first drivers come into the pits. It means that Leenberg could be coming back in very soon. Now, Let's be honest, if you're going to get three stops in, you really want to time the second stop at about halfway in the race as Leenberg's Hello. teammate gets a slow down penalty. That's more than that. It's a drive oh, it's a drive penalty. through penalty. Speaking of... Oh dear, that is not what you want. That is absolutely. The... <laughs> and a slow down penalty for Alex Fall as well. Not quite as bad, but Penn Eastrum, a drive through penalty. It means he'll have to come back into the pits in the next three laps to serve that penalty. Could be game over already for the Swedish driver. Yeah, very much a case of really struggling there. He's right down the order as well as Per Nystrom. So uh, he needs to try and find a lot more. Two retirements so far from this race. So uh, that's not going to be ideal. But only two retirements so far. I was expecting a higher rate of attrition here today. But we haven't seen it. Battle for second position, though, is back on because... Here is Dejo Shoka, who has closed down uh, the driver in second position here, Parginos. Uh, and Vangelis Parginos now, uh, looking at this as a Hyundai 1-2 at the moment, but it could very well not be in the next few moments because there is Shoka behind, who is closing in with the draft down to three tenths of a second. Yeah, that early stop from Parginos, although it was good in the early run of um, his second outing from the pits. Choker is all over him now on slightly fresher rubber, about two laps advantage, and he's going to go to the inside, coming down into the hairpin. Not quite enough. Um, oh, but Parginos goes wide. His tyre's really suffering right now, and that's just a giveaway to Choker right now. 
cookies. That is Dave Joe Shokers. And if you're going to get your hand caught in the cookie jar, you're not going to get caught like that. So Dave Joe Shoker up into second, making it a Hungarian 1-2-4 once again. But crucially enough, because Pajinos' tires are going off, he may be in the wheelhouse in the next four to five laps of coming back in, getting his second stop away. Remember, he was incredibly early with that stop. He knew he was going to need to go longer on this one. And we're looking at this now, maybe in terms of offings of how long this is going to be. This could be upwards of a 50 lap race, 51 laps, 52 maybe. But you are seeing here some brilliant work going on. And look at this battle that's going on right now for seventh and eighth. Nate Long, remember, on the freshest tyres of most here in this field has caught back to Khan Yang. And this could be the battle that we are seeing here for seventh and eighth place here on the road. Absolutely, Nate Long. I don't think he needs to panic much about getting past Kanyan here. Kanyan, the, the master of overtaking into the chicane, it seems. But let's see if Nate can make that move into the chicane. Is he all over the back of him as we get on around Stavlot as we make our approach towards the Blanchemont curve? He's quite a long way back. He's going to get pick up the slipstream. The Alfa Romeo, as we said, is not particularly good on the faster stretches of the track. Let's see if he will make the move going into the chicane. He is right on his rear, coming out of Blanchemont. He picks the outside. It is not going to be a Jensen Button Vettel moment. Don't speak too soon, but he's going to go around the outside on the first turn. Can he keep it on the inside? No, no he can't. Excellent from Digikimi to keep his position there. Had to fight hard there, but of course ran a little bit too deep. Remember, it's off camber in both parts of the apexes, so it's always tougher to go around the outside at that section of road. So Nate Long's going to have to try and find a different way to try and make that position. All the meanwhile, they are closing down in on uh, Tonga Guardia here, who is losing a second a lap to these drivers at this point in time. So keep that in mind. Remember, he's got to go, oh, he's going to try and get himself going through. And I think we may have just seen the end of Tonga Guardia's internet there. I think he may be out. Oh, Follow yes, he's back. just... Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> never mind, carry on. Um, yeah, Tonga Guardia losing a position to Gurunyan um, uh, not too long ago, and he's just defending in front of the Cooper of Scott McLean, who is a lap down, sadly, the uh, force racing driver. Tonga Guardia, he, he is losing a lot of time, as you said, Jake. He is losing nearly two seconds a lap as Kovacs is lapping at 231.5, an extraordinary time in a race situation here at Spa. Um, Tonga Guardia, you know, he, he knows what he has to do. Uh, we, we calculated it earlier. He cannot lose more than 50 seconds. We are near the halfway point of the race and a bit of contact there. Yep, here's Jaeger. He's under pressure right now from White at this point. So Alistair White, who we've not talked about here at all in this race at this point in time, he has very, very quietly just put himself up into 15th place. Yes, snuck his way up into the top half of the field. Good execution of the pit, it seems. And he's all over the back of Tamas Jaeger, the winner from last week, remember, guys. All over the back of him. Alistair seems to have pulled something off here as he made his way past Guido. And he's going to make his way past Jaeger very soon, potentially. And not far in front of them either is Jeff Perkis. Yeah, and of course, Jeff Perkis is pushing on on fresher tyres than a lot of these drivers that he's fighting. So Perkis is now going to use the power of that Peugeot to get himself moving forward and make sure that he gains the positions that he needs at this point in time. In comes Parginos then for his second Ooh. stop of the day with an hour and eight minutes to go. And he's missed his pit oh. box by a fair margin as well. So Parginos here has cost himself maybe two seconds. He has cost himself that battle for second, it seems, unless Choker can mess up in the pits when he comes in eventually. But these are very, very early pit stops from Parginos. It means he'll have to run for longer on older rubber later on in the race, whether it is his third stint coming up next or whether it is his fourth, which will run on to the end. But this will be a pit stop for fuel as well, Jake. That is something very important here because the tanks last about 30 laps here. You may as well pit, um, put fuel in at this point in the race. I think at this point we are going to see almost everyone coming in for what will be their second or first stop of the race because fuel will be running out now. 
Well, here's the question as well. You may fuel during uh, the time you come in for your first stop. So you may just try and splash and fill the tank up a little bit. Almost like when you have that Sunday drive, Alex, you go over to the petrol station, you just fill in a little bit, and that's a 20 pound or so that gets you through the week. Yeah, and I never like paying that extra penny that I accidentally go for, <laughs> go over. But that looked like a pretty decent pit stop from Paginos, apart from missing his stall. Let's hope that he has only lost about two or three seconds. He could probably make it up as he exits the pits here. But something to bear in mind, he has obviously come in for fuel. That is an extra lot of weight in his car, which a fuel, full tank of fuel versus a near empty tank of fuel loses you about a second per lap on this track. Well, it's crucial. He's come out in 21st place now here behind William Foyle. So uh, that's going to be interesting. And he's a good 20 seconds off of him at the moment. So he's got a lot of fresh air to go out there and attack with. So that's going to be the big key. He's got fresh air. He can set those clean laps. He can get those times in together. And this might just be crucial the way that this race will be run into the latter stages then of this race. This is how the field looks then. So Kovacs lead, Shoka second, and Havesi in third. It's all Hungarian. One, two, and three at the moment with Garunian in fourth and Nate Long currently in fifth. Tonga Guardia has just lost a position here and that one, or no, he's just held that position even, sorry, uh, to Khan Yang at this point in time. Yang's got to find a way through pretty quickly around a very um, latency deadly, uh, that would be the right way to describe it, Tonga Guardia at this point in time. But he gets the inside here in towards Blodgemon and gets the move done without any worries at all. So there goes Guardia back down into seventh. Remember, he's yet to come in and make his stop. He's trying to make the one-stop strategy work. But there's Khan Yang up into sixth place. Absolutely. Oh, and, oh, excuse me. Sorry, guys. I, I thought Tonga okay. was going into the pits, but uh, it looked like a little bit of um, Nescafe net code then, <laughs> it seemed. But uh, Tonga Guardi is still in seventh place at the moment, yet to stop. I, I can't quite work out how far he is from the top spot. That is how I'm going to work this out. Now, Tonga will be coming in for his first stop in the next one to five laps, I am going to predict. I'm pretty sure that Volkswagen... Ah, there we go. Ooh, time is running out for Tonga as we are not quite at the halfway point. I do think it is 50 seconds. He cannot lose um, to Kovacs. Well, Kovacs, presuming he is the, the, the lead car at the moment in terms of strategy. Nate Long is also one to look out for. He doing less stops than Kovacs, but he has made one already. He's only got one left to Kovacs two. He cannot lose more than 50 seconds either. I mean, I... I going to predict that Nates will only come in now for tyres and fuel and then stay out for the remainder of the race. William Four, we thought, was going to be on a similar strategy to him. He, well, something must have happened in the pits there because he's all the way down in 20th and a long way back from his teammates, whom of which he was catching at one point. Um, Alexander Foyle, who also started on the back row next to William Foyle, who's dropped a lot of ground from William, but he is also plodding along, just coming out of last source there. And this is going to try and be uh, Tatara trying to deal uh, with his battle. He's in this one uh, at this moment in time uh, with a one certain Mr. Lee Horn, who, remember, was up fighting for the race lead in the very early stages of this race. This one going for 18th place, and that's going to be a big hurt for Lee Horn, who knew that he had uh, a lot of pace in this one. It's the Andy Prio car uh, that Vlad Tatara has at the moment in the link, but... Ultimately, as he goes through uh, the uh, Jackie Ips corner, he's still just about holding on to what he needs to. Absolutely. Tatara yeah, has been Kovacs. Kovacs in the pit. Now, let's focus on him at the moment. We are comparing him to Vangelis Parginos. Parginos at the moment is coming around the he's going into the Jackie Inks corner now now he that might seem like a long way back but Kovacs is probably going to be taking on fuel as well as tires which is well over a minute in pit stops here he may as well put the kettle on and have a little sip of that tea through the straw that they put through their helmets a slow down by the way for Gyrkos not having a good race this week um nope. the Hungarian the Honda but Jake one eye on Kovacs I will keep an eye on Parginos well, Kovacs is in, Havesi is in, Garunian is in. That will promote Nate Long up to second place then as it stops goes on. So this is going to be key on the strategy right now as we are looking at the moment here. And Havesi will have the better box compared to his rivals. 
uh, out there at the moment. And there you can see David Kovacs currently classified as eighth place. He sits and waits. He picks up his fuel. He gets his tyres. And he is going to drop a long way down the order. Parginos, of course, in that fresh air. So this is going to be an incredibly long stop that we're looking at right now here, Alex. Yes. Parginos coming through just out of Blanche Blanchemont now. He's coming towards the chicane. How are we getting on with Kovacs, Jake? He's off the jack, so it's oh. only fuel now. He's waiting. In fact, he goes. Look at the margin. Then as he goes through, he's going to be at turn one right now. That is a fantastic stop by Kovacs. He's away by miles. Excellent stuff from Kovacs and Paginos just crossing the line now. That has not quite worked out for Paginos. He's going he's, he's going to be have he's going to have the older rubber. He we know he hasn't got the upper hand of pace at the moment with Kovacs. Kovacs very executing these pit stops perfectly at the moment. He is doing everything he needs right now to win this race. Of course, you've got to remember Deja Shoka has a couple laps advantage if he wants to try and stretch that out again on that run he'll be coming in probably in the next three laps or so we are over the halfway distance the countdown begins towards the end of this race we got ourselves one hour a minute and 56 seconds i've seen that the clock has just slightly changed there ladies and gentlemen but we've got some very good runs at the moment but now this is where the mid strategy comes in you're not going to see too many battles per se but what you are going to see are drivers trying to work maybe to get themselves behind a driver save a bit of fuel and go on through out there on track and we have just seen a change of position as uh, that is uh, Luca Carancini who has dropped behind one Simone Guido out on track for 10th and 9th at that point in time so keep an eye on this this is about the time where we're expecting the likes of Tonga Guardia to come down in and make his stop he's gone over an hour at this point in time, looking to try and get himself home. We've also got this battle fifth and fourth on the road at the moment. This is Harry Melvin versus Davide Casciello. Absolutely. And just to note from Tonga Guardia, I can see on my telemetry, he's got 100% of damage. I'm not sure what that's from. Maybe it's the tires. Uh, no, no, sorry. No, to ho oh, hover over it. Let's and, have uh, a look at Melvin then. And he had to come into the pits as well. So Casciello will pick up the place by a mile. Harry Melvin ultimately getting it horribly wrong down at the bus stop and ultimately will lose a position and a bit more as he makes that stop. There's that uh, that novice inexperience that we have seen there. A small mistake coming onto the pits and they say it for all the best drivers, Alex, that they maximise both in-lap and out-lap. Absolutely. Perfect uh, there, Jake. But yes, Melvin... Uh, probably showing his experience there. I mean, fantastic pace at the moment, but I am, I am going to make a strong assumption here that this is his first race in race room that has a pit stop. Well, has at least one pit stop in it. He's probably been advised his, uh, his strategy by his next-gen team manager, Lee Horn, who is right behind him, in fact, in the pits um, in 13th place. Paginos makes his way across the line to pass these guys who are currently in the pits, one of them of which is Tonga Guardia, by the way, making his first pit stop of the afternoon. He has waited to the halfway point to make this stop, and will he stay out to the very end now? I would make a very strong guess that he will. Well, we will certainly see how this one works. You can see he's down there on the lane. He'll get tyres, he'll get fuel, and he will be looking to try and get himself clear from now to the end of this race here as he actually gets off of the jacks, and he should be away shortly, and there he goes. So uh, we'll see where he comes out in all of this. He's down, currently classified in 16th position, but I expect him to jump maybe one place here past Simone Guido, who's still there in the box so off and away he goes and he might just be side by side coming out of the pits with Fraser Roston so he's back down now into 15th place at this moment in time and talk about how stops have worked you feel that Havesi actually who is currently in 13th uh, is now looking to try and attack Casciello here to try and get down the inside and Harry Melvin if it weren't for his mistake would have been right in the thick of it Absolutely, yeah, and Havesi, I'm wondering how he's so far behind here at the moment, but uh, looking for that looking for that gap on the Alpha in front of him, not the same Alpha, let's remember Havesi is in the 2018 Alpha, and in front of him Castello is in the 2019, and the leader, Choker, in the pits, in his pit stall already, so now we now is the time to compare Choker to his Hungarian um, patri compatriot, Kovacs, who is coming through Stavolot now, Jake. Well, this is crucial because the gap was six seconds 
for Davil Kovacs. Uh, sorry, for uh, Kovacs at the moment. So uh, for Kovacs, he knows what he needs. Is also into the pits there. Goes Kanyang for his second of three stops then here today. This is going to be what is very, very crucial right now to keep in mind. Shoka needs a gap of around eight seconds here to feel like he's good. He's off of the jacks now and he will be away very, very shortly. So has he got himself the get up and go? He's still waiting on the fuel. So this will be a long fuel stop. Unless he's converting to a two from here, that might be something that he's trying to keep in mind as a way to try and win this race. At the moment though, it seems like it's a very long wait as Kovacs has already got himself in towards La Source. I tell you what, though, you, you've made an interesting point there, Jake. If Choker has changed his mind and he's decided to go full fuel and one set of tyres to the end of the race, that might be a stroke of genius from Choker here. But it, there's no telling if that is actually what he's going for just yet, but he has lost a lot of time from Kovacs at no, the moment. He's on the same strategy, because look at this. He's right behind Parginos here, Ooh. and that was what he was looking at, just filling up the tank to full. That's what's cost him all the time. And Parginos, all of a sudden, once more, it's the same story. He's found Groundhog Day all over again. Every time he wakes up and looks behind him, there is Shoka. Back, uh, yeah, Parginos hands back in the cookie jar, it seems. He is in front of Choker yet again. And Parginos, although he messed up in the pits, Jake, he has perfect. He's made those outlaps perfectly. He uh, has got himself in front of Choker on pace alone here, and he needs to defend it now. He will be on older rubber which is a, dis a huge disadvantage right now. He's been out for about three laps more than Choker, but nonetheless, they are still a long way behind Kovacs, who is absolutely nailing this race at the moment, setting consistent 2.31 second laps as he comes through Puhan right now. Well, this is the key as well. Do not count out Nate Long from this race. He's doing 2.32's mids at this point in time, and he's got himself 27 seconds over Lucas Dzerski, who's actually battling for second with his teammate. So it's a Peugeot battle at the moment between Dzerski and uh, Perkis at the moment. But you also got Kovacs there, who behind this back 27 seconds, He's only 12 seconds back of that. So the gap is 40 seconds and closing here at the moment for David Kovacs. But that is 40 seconds that he will gain an advantage on uh, as he's got to make one stop as with Long. Yes, that is right. So um, oh, hmm. it's very difficult to work this out right now, Jake. It's very difficult. But put Long in the lead. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well... <laughs> I th the tallying is going to be in 12 laps time. I mean, late lo Nate Long w probably is not coming in again if he's doing a two-stop strategy. Oh no, sorry, sorry. No, yep, sorry. Do excuse me. Yes, he has got to make another pit stop. I, I have not. I am not entirely sure when that's going to be. It, he might try and go for minutes. less fuel. Yeah, he might go try and go for less fuel. Uh, which means he will pit in 15 minutes, as you said. Yeah, but if he pits now, he can take quite a high tank of fuel and go until the end but it means he'll be running for longer on zero percent iowa and it goes long it goes into the minus figures of course but uh nate long certainly want to keep an eye on the american at the moment it, it is it is an interesting strategy and at the moment well in front of his teammate by plus uh, by thir plus 37 seconds at the moment but nate long it certainly is one to keep an eye on when it comes to strategy he might have yeah. he might have looked a match here he might have met a match as uh, Dzerski has come down in to make his stop. He uh, hands over, gets the fuel, gets the tyres and gives Perkis second position then out on the road. Here's the fight for third though that's going to happen because this is William Foyle and he will have the man who is the leading three-stop strategist at the moment, David Kovacs, just behind here in the Hyundai trying to deal with this behind. So keep an eye on this then as this continues on. So William Foyle at this point can effectively here, Alex, play rear gunner for his teammate. Yeah, I was just thinking that, Jake. If if Nate Long is aware that Foyle is in front of Kovacs right now, I'm sure the team instruction there will be, help me out here, William, um, as Kovacs, you know, clearly the quicker man above William right now, but William, we know what he's like on track. He is a fierce fighter, winner of race two last week at Bratton's Hatch in the British Race Room Championship, and that race, he was up against William's eSports driver, Jake uh, Jack Keithley, 
and, and that oh, isn't. I, I was a Williams esports driver. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? Don't we all? They're probably better than the Formula One team. Uh, moving on. Um... <laughs> Wow, moving on indeed. Tonga Guardia has actually made a move. He's gone past Jonas Leenberg into 15th place. He tries to make the one-stop strategy work out. He knows everyone around him needs to pit, but he ultimately knows he's just got to stay consistent between now and the end of this one. 15th place at the moment. We'll see how his improvements go on. Here's another battle. Tamash Jaeger at it with uh, one Zuraya Garunian. Jaeger, I believe, is on a different strategy call here to Jiraiya at the moment. Jaeger, at the moment, has had a very strong race, though, in the Honda. Yeah, well, this early part of the race, he was actually struggling to find his ground a bit. He was dropping positions like a fly at the beginning of the race, but it seems that the strategy he has made and the conservative driving style, it seems, has got him higher and higher up the field. I mean, his next driver in on the positions board, anyway, is Parginos, who is not that far ahead. He's only at the end of this straight. Tamis Jaeger very 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 high pace at the moment in the same uh sorry not in the same car as Kovacs but it, yeah well Jaeger is one to look out for he seems to be putting pace and strategy together here as he's made mincemeat of Zariah and he's going to make his way towards Paginas who is only six seconds up the road from him well six seconds says you all you need to know at this point in time and of course when you know what you need to do Got to find yourself some positions. Kovacs has made his way through on William Foyle. It's taken him over a lap, though, to do so. And as such, he's now got eight seconds to chase down to Jeff Perkis, currently in that second position. In fact, let's go on board here for a lap. Let's give you some fan immersion and listen to just the sounds as David Kovacs right now tries to chase down for second place. So as we rejoin you, we are looking at the battle for seventh place currently between Zariah Gurunyan and um, Tamas Jaeger. Battle for seventh place. Tamas Jaeger breaking away a little bit from Zariah, it seems, as he has his eyes set on Vangelis Parginos right now in sixth place as he comes through Blanchemont right now, really pushing that Honda to its limit as he comes into the chicane. Nate Long still out in lead in the lead, it seems, at the moment. As he goes through Lacombe, he has got no one around him, no one behind him, no one in front of him. Clean track, just focusing on hitting his marks and making that strategy work. Jake. It's all the marks that you need as they've gone on through. You've seen a bit of fan immersion with uh, David Kovacs as well, who is uh, currently trying to push uh, to a limit. 231.5 that last time by uh, by him. His best, uh, best for Nate Long, 232.6 at this moment so that's where we are seeing uh, the scraps going on at this point in time in the racing action at the moment worth noting that Shoka has gone through on Parginos and has gone through by a long distance the gap now 3.3 seconds down the road Shoka is and that's key for Parginos whose strategy of pitting earlier than anybody else is starting to backfire ever so slightly with the way that this race is running out here in the latter stages that we are starting to hit in this one overall. This is a two hour, five minute race that we're in and we're down to the last 48 seconds minus a bit of chump change at this point in time. Some great drives have been going on through this field, but uh, Alexander Foyle is someone who's started to struggle a little bit. He's in ninth place and another slow down penalty. That's at least the fourth one I've seen for Alexander Foyle today. Yeah, he's really trying to get the most out of that car, it seems. Uh, you know, trying to make up for the disappointing begin uh, start of this race, which may have cost him so many positions just out of pure bad luck. But, um, yeah, Alex, 
you know, the strategy is going to have to save him here if it's going to save him. It is not gone to plan for Alex Paul right now. Currently in ninth place at the moment, which isn't too bad, but bearing in mind he still has to make another pit stop. And I believe all these drivers now out on track now have only one pit stop yet to make, all with the exception of who we think is doing a one-stop strategy, and that's Tonga Guardia in 15th place at the moment. Everybody else yet to make one pit stop. Oh, a little bit slidey goes Kan Yang in 13th place. The Finnish driver has mirrors full of Fraser Rostens at this point in time. They've got a bit of lap track in front there. That's a little battered Honda uh, that they will be having to try and uh, make a way by in the number 18 machine out on track but this is going to be a tough little battle Fraser Rostens tried to do well as actually in comes Nate Long for his final stop here with 46 three quarters of an hour to go that's a little early here I think he's two or three laps early but he's going to try and get it for the fuel and the tires as Avesi gets a slow down penalty Nate Long now all of a sudden is now putting his cards on the table and backing his skill so if Nate Long is going to have only one stop now as he's away already Quite a long way behind Kovacs, but he is away as Alex Fall makes his way past on the track. But Nate Long, if he is only going to make, if that is going to be his final stop of the day here today, it means he is going to be running at least eight laps on virtually no grip in that Volkswagen. But the others are yet to come in. Will he get the jump on these guys and will he get enough of a jump to stay in front? Nate Long is one to look out for. Tonga Guardia is one to look out for. And of course, the leader, Kovacs, is one to look out for. They seem to be the, uh, the, the leading drivers of the individual strategies at the moment, Jake. Well, this is the key. Nate Long's out ahead of Tonga Guardia and by a mile, that being 20 seconds, Fresh tyres around the outside of Sander Havesi. Side by side contact between the two. They're going to lean on each other here through the left and right and in through Malmadi. Havesi's going to hold on, but is this oh. a case of uh, resistance is futile? He defends hard again and Havesi's costing his own race here ever so slightly here. Trying to hold back a guy who's on fresh rubber down the inside. He opens up the door, gives him a little bump, but again, they might be side by side here into the next corner. More contact and Havesi is not going to let him have it easy. Nope, he is not. And I thought Nate Long was going to get that famous undercut you were talking about earlier, Jake, but he didn't. It, this is costing Nate a lot of valuable, valuable time. Maybe Havesi has, uh, has got a teammate, it, it, despite the different car in Kovacs in the, uh, the Hyundai up ahead. But Nate Long getting a taste of his own medicine here as he <laughs> we probably we, we think he um, whispered in William's ear earlier. But oh, huge contact from Nate Long. He spins just into the back there of Sander Havesi. He was trying to push through Fania, and all of a sudden, I think that's it. I think that's his race, and it could just be a whole, whole heap of troubles now as he tries to get himself going again, and only now he gets himself up to speed. Nate Long has ultimately thrown away the pretty much grand sum of 17 seconds. Oh, that has not gone to plan for Nate. Frus frustration behind Havesi. Havesi's job done there, it seems, of holding up Nate Long. But Nate not being patient enough. On cold tyres, remember, he just come out on fresh rubber and a heavy tank of fuel, potentially. And it has been tossed away here with just a little bit of a tank slapper, as they call it. The back end switching ends on him and it's leading him into the gravel. He is, yeah, as you said, Jake, he has lost a lot of time and probably any chance of a race win today because Kovacs up front yet again is not missing a mark here today in such a long race. A real mature, conservative drive from the Hungarian today. Exactly. He's got 12 seconds over Shoker. He's got 6.7 over William Poyle, who needs to come in. Jeff Perkis is in for his final stop of the day. He drops behind Guardia and Co. now down to 16th place. Off of the jacks he goes. The fuel will be going to be pumping in, and he'll be off and away pretty shortly at this point in time. So some good drives have been going on through this field, but of course we still got those one final stops to go for those who are running the three-stop strategy, and those will be knocking on the door in the next 12 minutes or so, which will be spearheaded by David Kovacs, who leads this one net on the road over Dejo Shoka by about 12 seconds overall. And remember, Shoka's got to find a way past Foyle unless he dives down 
in and makes a stop at the moment. Worth noting though, Tamash Jaeger in fifth position in the Honda, absolutely motoring away from Jiraiya Garunian at this point in time. And on that three stop, which we can confirm is a three stop, he has very, very subtly moved himself fourth in this race. But that all depends, of course, on Nate Long, who is currently classified as being 14 seconds back of this. And remember how long a stop takes. It takes 50 seconds. Nate Long was losing upwards of a second a lap when he was going at his best. Nate Long currently finds himself uh, at least uh, 25 seconds, 28 seconds behind Jaeger. That would put him to, if my maths is correct, on par with Kovacs at the moment and on worse tyres. Oh, yeah, but there's... Kovacs has got uh, got to come out of the pits and he's going to be on fresh rubber, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Nate Long is going to be on almost dead rubber for the rest of the race now. So if they're on par at the moment, it is advantage Kovacs right now. It is, and that's the key as well. So Nate Long could have had here, and this is the key, 17 seconds in the bank with, what, 12 laps to try and run on older tyres. That would have been a case of a second a lap would have done it for him. But ultimately, I think that spin has cost him a race victory today here, Alex. It certainly has, yeah. It, it, he'll be kicking himself later if he, if he loses this race by less than 20 seconds because he lost approximately that. All he, rec all he needed was to be just a little bit more patient. All right, Havesi was holding him up and losing him time which was playing on his mind but all Nate had to do was just wait until the next corner three car battle eighth ninth tenth Harry Melvin through on Davide Casciello but behind him as well you can see Alexander Foyle trying to stay with this group as they go up the hill remember Foyle hasn't come down in for his second stop at this point in time in the Volkswagen that's what most Volkswagens if not all have been trying to do two stops or one stop as they've been moving on forward but they can see the run up the hill the Kemmel straight towards that right left right of Leku Malmadi that complex and back to the inside goes Casciello looking to try and defend this one but foil around the outside gets it done impressive move there from Alex Ford but it is letting Melvin break away just a little bit here and Alex Ford messed up the second corner of Lacoum there and Casciello is back on the attack cookie jar moment yet again but Castello's on the inside going down into the hairpin he has got that position back brilliant battle here from the Italian and the Brit yep good work as Castello back into ninth position in the 2019 Alfa Romeo Giulietta making that push on forward so that's going to be key for him in terms of the way that he wants that race to be run you've got other battles going on as Kanyang as mirrors full of Tonga Guardia yeah, Tonga Guardia and um, uh, Kanyen have been the source of drama in terms of damage in this race. Tonga Guardia is still carrying 100% damage, according to my telemetry here. But um, Kanyen showing, showed such promise at the start of this race here. Very unlucky to lose out on what could have been a top five um, battle for him here. But uh, he's making up ground. He's making up a few positions here. He's breaking away from Tonga Guardia ever so slightly here. And he might be catching Fraser Rostens not far in front of him as well, Jake. Well, that's five seconds is the gap in front to him. So that's going to be crucial in terms of how the Audi is going to run this one today. Remember, all those drivers are starting to hit that window of final stop central is going to be happening soon, as is this battle for second position on the road. Crucially at the moment, William Foyle, who's got to come in one more time and make a stop. You've got, of course, uh, Dejo Shoka, who's got to come in one more time and make a stop. This will be for position between these two. And the fact that William Foyle has been able to stretch out this stint this far in terms of this race has really put him on for a really strong result come the end. I think that he may actually sneak a top five out of this one, could William Foyle, if he's only got this one stop to go and he's only losing now the position to Shoka. Remember, he's got nine seconds. In fact, he's running incredibly deep there in through the left, right. So he's ultimately now in third position. But the crucial fact here is, Alex, eight seconds to Vangelis Parginos right now. If he pits in, say, let's say the next lap, the next two laps, I think he's fighting for our podium. I think he might be right here, Jake. He has got to come in for tyres as... Ha well, I believe it's only tyres that William Ford needs to come in for. Well, he might need fuel. He might need fuel, yeah. Um, if he needs fuel, then it might be 
Ooh, it might be a little bit more difficult to judge whether he'll get a podium here, but Paginos, his podium is in threat at the moment. You are absolutely right. Well, that's the key here. Vangelis needs to push here. He also knows that behind him in fifth position right now on the road is Tamash Jaeger at this point in time. It's worth seeing a comparison between these two in the battle for fourth because it is starting to just slip down 4.1 seconds between these two and if you look at their lap times prior hardly any sort of change between them 32 4 32 3 uh, the, uh, the honda and the hyundai at the moment it's a battle of japan versus korea in the manufacturers <laughs> absolutely and hyundai certainly doing well today one's in the lead and one's on for a third place at the moment Com currently riding in fourth but on for a podium at the moment the other hyundai's haven't fared so well there's peter jacob in 21st and the sorry jake what was that Look at Harry Melvin. He is all over Pavesi, who, as we know, has the widest Julietta in all of Belgium at the moment. Round the outside, trying at Blanchemont. No run through that section. I have to go at the very difficult bus stop to get this one done on car number 88. So here comes the 52 Audi. Look at try and push. And again, he's just going to lift off, sit, wait. Hope there's another position wide, though. There goes the run. And this might be a chance here on the power on the exit. That could have been wide, actually, there from Havesi. He may get a slowdown penalty for that. I think he's just got away with it then as they go side by side to the Lassau's hairpin. They do have a bit of issues in front in the form of lap traffic. But again, Havesi just oh. Oh, into the wall too shallow goes Melvin. And that could have hurt the suspension. I think it did. I saw the bonnet pop up a little bit on that car as it came through. That was really unlucky from Melvin. He very eager to get in amongst the big boys straight away on his XR debut here. Hevesi's debut as well, I believe. So these guys really making a name for themselves. A slowdown penalty for Hevesi. What has he done? He has cut the track or run wide somewhere to get a slowdown penalty. Is he... This is going to be where it hurts him, and Havesi knows it, so he's got to slow it down, but I think he's got enough of a margin here as he has that track limits abuse. He's going to try and get himself through that section and then slow it down with the traffic to give himself the best possible time. Alexander Foyle gets another one. William Foyle has come out of the pits, mind you, and he's behind Rostens in 11th place, so he did have to take the fuel. That's why he has dropped so far down the order, and it is also worth noting that Parginos has come in and made his stop or is making his stop right now and he's now in 12th position now after coming down in with 35 minutes to go effectively racing William Foyle now to the end he has he's dropped just behind William Foyle William Foyle has executed a pit stop perfectly here William Foyle you might be right here uh, Jake he could be on for a podium that is a brilliant pit stop from William and if he is that far ahead of Farginos, he might well be on to catch up with Choker. Choker on older tyres right now. William on new tyres right now as he has an Audi, the Audi of Fraser Rostens right in front of him in his way at the moment. But William Foyle certainly proving his worth here today as he looks to the outside of Fraser Rostens. Now back down the inside, but which will be the outside into the next corner, the chicane. Well, he's going to try... Oh, he's, he's got alongside him. Oh, he fantastic. He's going to get the inside now for the next section. But if Rostens can hold it here around the outside, he'll have the inside here at the campus corner at Stavolo. Nope, not going to happen. So well done. Well worked there on the fresh rubber as Foyle has got himself through on Rostens. And let's not forget that William Foyle started today position 35 and he's on for a third place finish. That is incredible. Yeah, that it, 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 we, we saw it early on in the race. He was just picking off the drivers one by one. Sheer pace has got him to this point. Pretty good practice for tomorrow, it seems, in the British Race Room Championship. But William Fall really, really shouting above the, um, above the city here. Absolutely brilliant from William Fall so far. Let's see how he will compare to Choker. We're not sure when Choker's going to come in the pit. It'll probably be in the next um four to five laps potentially kovacs is 12 seconds ahead of him at the moment kovacs well it may seem in the bag at the moment but one more stop everything could change you never know alex Boyle comes in and keep an eye out on guardia here who's actually come out right behind these guys so uh in terms of his one stop he is 
not a million miles away. And in fact, he is still having this battle with uh, Khan Yang at the moment. Lee Horn in the background as well, wanting on this side by side as they go up the hill through Oru's Radion complex section to go through. And Horn's got the best run of the lot here as he goes side by side with the Argentine. And now the Sun's got to get by the Finn as well. This could be a case of a Horn against the machine at this point. He may have to dive for the inside, gets back into tow distance. He looks to try and get himself to the inside. As also, Roston still holding on in terms of that battle with William Foyle. But look at that from Yang holding on. Oh, excellent. De defending from Nyan, yeah, but Lee Horn capitalizing on uh, Tonga Guardia's mistake through O'Rouge as he looks to the inside, going into the hip, and he decides to back out of it. The time will come at a later day, he says. Uh, but, yeah, as you said, Tonga Guardia, that will be that will be it for the rest of the race. He, he, will, he is staying out, and he's not that far away from the likes of William Fall and Parginos. But William Fall, by the way, is stretching his, his well, positional lead from Barkit Paginos at the moment. William Fall really is one to look out for right now as he is chasing down also his teammate, Nate Long, in eighth place. Jake, this is not out of the question yet. The podium is still yet to be decided. And this is the key here. 12 seconds the margin. Uh, sorry, four seconds the margin that he needs to find to Nate Long. Remember, Nate Long at this point in time was even with uh, one Kovacs who actually comes into the pit. So this is going to be key. I expect Kovacs to come out ahead as Avesi gets another slowdown penalty to deal with. So he starts to get a little bit raggedy and with the way that he's driving around this place and Castiello's going to close in soon. But Kovacs comes in. Remember, he had 13 seconds over Shoka. He had pretty much 18 seconds over the likes of who he's dealing with. And in fact, he's going to be out and away right now. Like Nate Long's coming through the chicane. Yep, you can absolutely see that through the chicane. So Melvin's going to go by. Is he? No, Kovacs is going to come out in second place on the road. Yep, Choker hasn't come in. Hasn't come in yet, but Kovacs very much second out on the road, and he is that is his final stop of the day. That will be his final stop of the day, and he's firmly in second place at the moment. Kovacs at the moment, you can't celebrate too early. They never they never say celebrate too early, but he is very much on for the win here in the first ever XTCR Spa 50 event. He has only got half an hour to go, about 13 laps to complete, but he has done everything important and anything that could have crucially lost this race for him is very much in his hands now. He is in control of this race. Out of the pits then will come Tamash Yeager after making his stop in the Honda. He will be out and away in 13th place. Simone Gaido is down in on the lane, as was uh, Garunian, who I believe has just leapfrogged Yeager in the stop by a considerable margin as well. So that's going to be key to keep in mind. 16 seconds of a leapfrog. That's the fuel margin difference between the Link and the Honda. So uh, there's Uriah Garunian having a fantastic run of things there in terms of that one. On now for the top 10, the battle is because there is Horn still stuck behind Guardia and there is Khan Yang in eighth place having that scrap. So that's going to be a very tall ordered battle that we will be seeing at this point in time. Drivers to come down in out of the leading drivers, Shoka, Melvin and also uh, Hevesi and Casciello to come in. Those four need to stop. But at the moment, it is on pretty much for everything else at this point in time. Absolutely. Uh, Choker is coming towards the chicane at the moment, and Kovacs is coming towards Blanchemont at the moment. Choker will be looking at the relative on his screen at the moment, thinking, I don't have a prayer in this right now. As he comes into the pits, Choker in the pits, Kovacs is going to find his way past him. It's a 50, 50 seconds approximately in the pits, as we've been saying all race, including the run down to the pit lane as he stops at his pit stall to take on his front tyres. Kovacs out of the chicane now. He will retake the lead here as he ends lap 37. Kovacs gonna, retakes the lead. That's going to be key as also another driver is going to be diving down onto the lane. That's Davide Casciello making his final stop then in the 2019 Giulietta. So it is a comfortable margin for this man here, David Kovac here, who has absolutely waltzed away with things at the moment. It's four seconds over Melvin and Havesi, but both of them need to come down in and make that stop. So we'll keep that in mind 
as out of the pits comes Shoka, and this is key. He is ahead of Foyle and Long, and Long has just lost the place there to William Foyle, so the podium uh, is out of reach, but this is the key in terms of the fight then for what William Foyle wants at this point in time. The gap to Shoka, who is next second on the road, is one and a half seconds. Absolutely, and I'm looking at Melvin battling with Havesi at the moment. This is a battle that's been raging on for quite some time in this race, quite a personal battle, it seems, um, throughout this entire race. And Melvin, currently in second place, yet to come in, it seems. Uh, I believe most of the drivers will finish their pit, um, total amount of pits over the next couple of laps as we descend into the final quarter of this race with 26 um, to 27 minutes to go. That could be the key then to this one here. Melvin and Havesi staying out then just for the time being, but it is all about who has what at this point in time. Some fantastic battles for fifth, sixth, seventh. This is second, third, fourth, and fifth. Next on the road, we do believe Shoka and Foyle and Long and Parginos. And Long is doing a good job to stay in the toe here uh, with William Foyle, his teammate. He's doing well on those old tyres, but he does know that the cliff will come pretty soon in terms of the way that his race is going to be run. It will come with about 20 minutes left on the clock as there is a change for position for ninth place as it's really hotting up here behind uh, Carl Yang at this point in time, trying to look for the inside, tries the likes of uh, Tonga Guardia here, just trying to get through, Horn's got the inside now, oh, that's a block and a half, and there's Lee Horn, that is the easiest move he will find in this race so far. Absolutely, but what a battle we're witnessing here, Carl Yang has been the source of entertainment today, he's been fantastic, right out of the blocks, just putting on a great show for us today but it's a fourth car to add into the equation here Zarai Grunyan has caught up on them as Lee Horn gets up alongside Kanyen the uh, so the Alpha seems a lot slower than that Audi could it be three wide going into the chicane Tonga's looking for it here goes Zarai around the outside oh that's brave that's so brave here from the Lincoln as he got himself there on the fresh tyres of the lot in will dive Lee Horn for his final stop but that is Zarai Grunyan from the space of Blanchemont to the chicane, making almost three places because Niang is not going to give this one up here in this battle. It's worth noting that also who's come in is uh, Harry Melvin. He's made that dive, but again, at last source, going to try and fight this one, but no wow. power on the exit. The link pulls away, and it's dangerous to go alone, have three places in the space of two corners. I think we might have just witnessed the move of the day. Absolutely brilliant from Zariah Gurunyan, who I have criticized in the past for not taking enough risks when it comes to overtaking. He's proved me wrong there. A fantastic show from the Ukrainian there. Round the outside into the chicane, capitalizing on, on the guys in front of him, squabbling for position. The mixture of Lee Horn going into the pits. Um, Khan Yen taking it easy into last source. As he goes wide, going into Lekoum, Tonga Guardia takes the position from Kanyen. Is Kanyen struggling with damage on that car? It, that remains to be seen, but Zariah, absolutely fantastic lap from him Guardia then. Is Guardia is through, yes. And seems to be breaking away from Kanyen as well, as is Zariah. He is gone. He is focused on catching Parginos, who's a long way ahead, coming out of Puan at the moment. Zariah, it has not gone to plan for him today, but certainly that, that overtake from him is something to take away from this race i believe he's got 23 minutes to chase down 11 seconds so at that rate he's got to gain a second every two minutes so that's a second a lap that he'll be needing and a little bit more as well so we'll see what jiraiya can do i reckon he's going to get close the worry is going to be about nate long though and when those tires hit the cliff he might just be in the position that he needs to one driver yet to come down in is the man in second position this is sandor havesi at this point in time, it's one, two, three at the moment for Hungary at this point in time. But Havesi at this moment needs to think about, OK, when's the stop? It's not this lap. And he may just be trying to go as late as he possibly can, if not at all at this moment. Havesi's put some really good stints in. He is due a final stop. 
but at the moment in second position right now, 7.6 his margin to uh, uh, Davos Shoka there in third position overall. And Shoka is actually doing a really good job against Foyle right now. Remember, he pitted later than what Foyle did, and he's using that lap of tyre life to his advantage. The gap has extended now to nearly three seconds. Absolutely, and that last lap from Choker was in fact more than half a second quicker than Foyle. Foyle's tyres seem to be fast approaching that cliff that we talked about earlier. Choker's very much op potentially optimal at the moment, not quite as optimal as Kovacs, who has just set, in fact, the fastest lap in the race. He does not stop. If this is a, if this is classed as an endurance event, which it probably isn't, but that is impressive. On the 40th Parginos. lap, Parginos on the and inside got, and he's got it easily done on nate long and this has been a fantastic race by kovacs absolutely but nate long they're just dropping back into sixth place as parginos comfortably gets the move done and there's not much you can argue against that that is a comfortable overtake there as the hyundai makes it two inside of the top five in terms of manufacturers then inside of your top 10 you have two hyundai's you've got three volkswagens who have done it all on strategy you've got two alfa romeos from two different types of alfa romeo and it's worth noting as well one link two hondas a very nice mix yeah absolutely it is quite a shame that the audis are not higher up they were doing very well early on the highest audi at the moment harry melvin uh, very much the talk of the tongue this um earlier on in this race but uh, the cooper has not gone as well they are uh, in fact, I think there was a retirement from a Cooper. No, there wasn't. It's the two Persians that are retired. Three Alphas have re retired in this race, which is a shame. But um, yeah, the um, the Starlight car, as usual, is the Hyundai. There's a reason why one of them has got a number one on their door. Uh, Gabriele Tarquini's winning Hyundai from the 2018 season, promoting to the number one of 2019. But 2019 was, of course, won by no other than the driver who's bearing his livery right now. David Kovacs is bearing the Norbert Michelitz livery right now right now who in fact won the championship on a very dramatic final round last season in the 2019 WTCR championship which rounded off at Sepang but Kovacs taking well at, as it stands is going to be the XTCR Spa 50 champion prematurely saying that of course anything can happen it only takes a, a spin in front of him and to get caught up with it perhaps it might take it might take a mistake from him, perhaps, going wide onto the gravel or something like that. But Hevesi is in second place at the moment. Hevesi's yet to pit. I believe he's yet to pit anyway. But Choker, who we thought was in second place, is not far behind him. He is behind Kovacs by nearly 20 seconds now. It is going to take a huge mistake from Kovacs to lose that time. But if we think back yeah. to Nate Long's spin earlier, he lost nearly 20 seconds. Only takes something like that. But Kovac seems to be maturely and sustainably driving his way to victory right now in that Hyundai. Brilliant drive from him today. It looks like Nate Long would have been on for second position. The gap behind him to the leader is now at 26 seconds now for Nate Long. He would have been comfortably in second position at this point in time. Maybe trying to hold on to that late in the race, but... It is not over and done with Havesi, who is stretching this as late as he possibly can. Maybe trying to run for the border here to end his race. He's only got two and a half seconds here to Shoka in third position overall. Then it's a further three seconds back to Foil. And so if he's thinking about six seconds to hold on to at this point in time, he knows that it's very, very simple. He's simply put, not doing enough to hold on to this podium if he's going to try and run this one to the end we know that he is one of the toughest battlers he'll hold on to the position pretty much longer than anybody uh, can at this point in time and at the moment it's got to be pretty simple for Havesi either he makes that stop and he drops down the order and he goes for the shortest uh, stint possible on, in terms of making it or he is committed between now and the end and he is committed to dropping positions he's already lost nearly two seconds on this lap here to Shoka who's got the gap down to eight tenths yeah, that's right. Um, Choker very much sealing his um, sealing his place on second place right now. Foyle, I, I think right now he is going to um, put focus on finishing in third place. Parginos seems to be breaking away from Nate Long, and it seems he is catching William Foyle ever so Slow slightly. Down, uh, there Another it is. Going wide up, He's going to have to be very, very 
clever with the way that he does that or does he dive in no he'll stay out and try and defend this one against his compatriot you can see he runs wide off of the exit and he's still having to serve still having to serve still having to serve but all of a sudden now here looks Shoka going for the outside then for second position in this race this battle 20 seconds off of your race leader David Kovacs and this is going to be tough but around the outside but they're using the slight banking at turn one Dejo Shoka up into second place Excellent move from Choker around the outside of Last Source. We've seen that a lot today, but Hervesi seemed to cut the corner too much at Last Source, got bogged down, and it lost him the position ultimately. William Foyle is not giving up, however. If Hervesi is staying out, then William Foyle is very much on for a podium still, unless Hervesi is yet to come in. We, he might have been one of the drivers who decided to switch at the last minute to a two-stop strategy, but if that is the case at this point, Hervesi's tyres will be sheerly, sheerly lost away at the moment, as may Foyles, as he is slowly slipping away from Choker in front of him, but it is worth comparing right now, Jake. Foyles' last time was a 32.7. Van Gelis' time was a 33.9. So Foyle, despite going wide right now into the hairpin, he is breaking away from Van Gelis ever so slightly per lap right now. Third place is on the cards for the driver who started in 35th place. And if there was ever a driver of the day candidate, that would be him at this point in time. William Foyle has climbed a staggering amount of positions in this race and he has done so pretty much most of them in the early stages. But then he just picked them up again and again and again and has done exactly what he has wanted to do. As wide there goes Havesi, horribly wide there down at that section missed his breaking point by a country and a mile uh, on top of that and there's the look oh. to the inside oh that's brave see a driver make a mistake try and capitalize Avesi's not the sort of driver who is going to want you to do that and again on the curves he goes through Avesi is pretty much driving on rims at this point he is and he's desperately trying to hang on to that position but at the same time William is desperately trying to get himself on that podium William notorious for going for <laughs> brave brave moves on the inside of people in many leagues uh, we've seen over the last few months and that was nearly one of them is he's going to probably go for the move to the chicane yes he does set it up right now Hevesi lets him have it it will be a late breaking battle William has the advantage he's in front there we go, easy, but the undercut from Havesi he hasn't got enough grip to get it into the corner though. That is third place for William Four right now. He is very much on for a podium right now, Jake. Absolutely, absolutely some brilliant work as he flicks into fifth gear on the brakes. He goes down the gears to second in towards turn number one at the moment. And now there's only 5.7 for Hevesi to try and hold on. But get a load of this right now. Zeraya Garunian is the man on a mission in the Shan Racing Lincoln Co. Number 100 right now. He's closing down Nate Long at a rate of one second a lap. Long still within two seconds of Parginos. And remember, Hevesi is struggling at the moment here out on track. Garunian here in the final few laps may have three positions to fight for come the end for fourth place. Absolutely, and I think the battles we need to look out for as the race approaches the its its later phases, the final 10% of the race is coming up. Choker and Foyle, it's worth keeping an eye on that. Foyle has gained on Choker ever so slightly in the last few laps, although Choker is on better rubber and in the better position. Havesi, it's worth keeping an eye on him. He's probably trying to stick it out to the end, but he is very much in this battle for fourth, which now might be between him, Parginos, Long, and now Garunian, but Garunian on a mission, as you said, setting great lap times. Long is not far in front, but Long is also catching up with Parginos in front. We've also got great battles going on. Eighth, ninth and tenth. Guardia on the one stop. Cash Yellow in ninth. And there's Tamash Yeager in tenth position, trying to chase down both of them at this point in time. That's a key little battleground, but we've got a bit of side by side here almost coming up the Kemmel. And it is between two different types of alpha here, as this is Simone Guido trying to go around the outside of Kanyang at this point in time through the first part. Lean on the second part as well as they go on through. Got to go careful. Guido has to stay behind for the moment, trying to open up back for the inside line. That's not going to work, but there's Cash Yellow also through and he's got it done at Pujon as well. So Guardia drops back into ninth place and it is soon going to be 10th with Tamashega closing. 
Thomas Jaeger, I believe, is on a three-stop strategy as well, and he will be on much, much fresher rubber than Tom Guadio, who is clearly not able to keep up with Davide Castiello at the moment. Castiello of the RRC team leading the way of the newer Alpha in this race, but the Honda catching up now. Thomas Jaeger, he's also been one of those drivers who's had a very, very sick... Uh, pictorial drive as he's charging towards that ninth place of Tonga Guardia. Tonga, probably very much safe to stay in the top 10 at the moment as Alex Fall is a further 12 to 13 seconds behind Tamas Jaeger, but it all depends how much time Guardia is going to lose on Alex Fall. But Alex Fall, yep, he, has, he isn't quite as high as William oh, Fall. Oh, it's a four stop. Oh. <laughs> No more said. Oh no, he. I. I'm going to say it, Jake. He's tossed this away. Well, that's a huge shame for Vangelis. He was the earliest to come in, the earliest to come in, the earliest to come in, and he has to get himself out and going again. A very quick stop, maybe a splash and dash on the fuel calculations because he came in so early. Remember, and that drops him now in this battle for 10th and 11th and 12th position here. A driver who was leading at the early stages of this race. Now, all of a sudden, has the pole sitter behind. And on top of that, Alex Foyle as well, who's going to try and keep him behind too. So this is going to be a tough scrap for the top 10. Promotes everybody up in position. Here's some side-by-side. -side. Tamas Jaeger on Tonga Guardia for 8th and ninth place now. And Guardia, I think, is going to have to give this one up here on the brakes into the right left. And they can see it. Tamas Jaeger's Honda by the Volkswagen. Yeah, Tam Tamas catching up very quickly with Tonga on that lap. It, that happened a lot quicker than I thought it would. Tonga is really struggling with grip right now, as we predicted he would. He's only got 10 minutes left to just hang in there. Vangelis has given him a lifeline, it seems, but Vangelis on fresh rubber, I don't think he's going to be particularly worried about Alex Fall behind him. Neither will he be worried about Melvin behind him. We know Vangelis has got the pace to break away from these two. He also has the tyre wear um, advantage to break away from these guys. So Vangelis risking it all I'm not sure why but he has tossed away a potential third but even fourth place in this race such a shame from the defending XL TCR champion strategy did not work for him today so Parginos in 10th position that will hurt for the longest time because he knows that he had opportunities here today here's the battle though Jiraiya Garinian within a second now of Nate Long here in the scrap for fifth place remember he's got six seconds Close down to Havesi, who's looking to try and find a level at this point in time. But Havesi gets a slowdown through Blanchemont, so now that gap's going to come down a little bit more. Long's tyres starting to go, and Garunian, remember, has been putting lap upon lap upon lap of Red 5, Nigel Mansleff's sort of qualifying laps going through as the heads through the left right chicane. Havesi, at this point in time, you can see just in front is the target he is trying to chase down. But the number six, or the sixth place driver now focusing on getting by the American in the Volkswagen. Absolutely. Zoraya is not going to write off fourth place at this moment in time. He has got the momentum and he will know he has. He just needs to get past Nate Long. It might be at this point. It's worth keeping an eye on them right now. The the line through Eau Rouge is crucial. Late apex, straight line that exit of Eau Rouge. He lines it up across the curb. Yep, good line it seems from the link and he's already got the move. He's already got the move on the outside of Nate Long. Fantastic stuff through Eau Rouge from Zariah and he might get past him before we even get to Lecom. Yeah, that is right. He is through and that was a fantastic setup from Zariah. He is on a mission right now. Remember the link is brilliant in straight lines and that's why he's able to get by uh, that fantastic Volkswagen that's done well on the two stop there of Nate Long who drops back into sixth position. The chase is on five seconds, four laps. That's all that's left for Zariah Garinian. He's got to chase down one and a quarter seconds a lap to get past Avesi to move up into fourth position as the leading link in this field. Worth noting as well, Melvin's made a way through on foil who did have a slowdown penalty to deal with as well as that. But Melvin desperately trying to stay with Parginos. You remember, freshest tires of all. He's running away with things at the moment there in 10th place. Not many worries to deal with in terms of that one. The battle is on fourth and fifth. Gap at the front, though, for anyone who is wondering at this point in time. 19 seconds for David Kovacs at the moment, who can effectively just try and just, you know, manage the race from here in. He knows what he's got left in this race. He's got himself 
probably four laps as he crosses the line. He'll probably cross the line with about 20 seconds left to go here, Alex. So everyone's going to have to go a lap longer here in this race than they would do otherwise. Oh, potentially, yeah. And we, we well, something we need to thro throw into the mix now is has pe have the have all the drivers put in enough fuel? Maybe that is why Van Gelis came in. Maybe that's why. Um, but these guys are going to be having one eye on their positions relative, one eye on the fuel tank. As Tonga Guardia has just put himself... No, he hasn't. Do excuse me. That might have been a bit of lag. He's slowing. Something's happened to Tonga Guardia. He has just lost loads of positions. I'm not sure what happened there. It might have been a spin at the campus there. But he uh, has... That puts him behind Melvin. And you can see right now how... Aggressive oh. Alexander Full is oh, passing the grass as he tries to find a way by. You're not going to do it that way, and he's going to extend to uh, the limits as he goes. And yes, <laughs> that is a slowdown penalty, <laughs> and I think that is the most clear and blatant case of slowdown penalty and track limits abuse I have ever seen. Um, I think the stewards are trying to tell Alex Full something here, but um, he has well, been. It is. You'll give it yeah. Back. Well, Alex Full is on 84 points on his on his limit at the moment, which. All right, we've only got six minutes to go, but he's got 16. If there's, uh, if there's any contact at any point in this race, if there's more off-track penalties, he, this could go wrong for him very quickly, could Alex fall? It absolutely could. Look at Garunian right now. Get a comparison of this at this moment in time. You can see right now that there is a huge difference in terms of times. It's one second now between these drivers and just through this corner alone he pulls in three tenths of a second on Sandor Havesi so Havesi now in all worlds of trouble here in fourth place knows what he needs to do defend like everything depends on it because he knows that he's got the gap over long Casciello trying to close in on long he's going to run out of time for it but Look at Garunian right now through the middle sector. Absolutely flying. He's going to use everything on the outside. That may just be an instant limit. No, it won't. As he hits the brakes in the 100 car. And you can tell that Zandag uh, that uh, Zariah Garunian is giving this one 100. Absolutely. But Zariah has to be careful. He has to be very, very careful. He, as he moves to the inside already of Sandor. Well, now, I will forget what I was, <laughs> what I was going to say. There. I was going to say Sandor Havesi is on 87 points. He needs to be careful. And, and Zariah needs to be careful not to take him out of the race. But that was an excellent move from Zariah. Just a pure difference of grip there and momentum. That's the key. There is three laps to go here at Spa from Cachamp. At this moment in time, it is Kovacs who has the lead by 19 seconds here and has absolutely walked away with things at this moment in time, has done everything that he has needed to do today to get the result that he wants. There are still positions up for grabs in this field. For example, right now, Tamas Jaeger is under pressure from Parginos at this point in time. And this is key because Parginos, remember, is going to be on the fresh tyres of anybody here having to pit one more time to make that stop to get the numbers in. And you feel that Jaeger here is going to have to defend for this eighth place because that gap has come down to pretty much a second in no time at all. He is a sitting duck right now to Van Gelis. Van Gelis has only got um, two to three laps to execute this move, but it seems as though he is going to gain on him. But catching is one thing, Jake passing is another. I do have one question for you, Jake, as we do enter the latter part of this race. Who, like in the rugby and the football, but who is your driver of the day today? Well, no doubts about it, William Foyle. You don't start from so far down the order after the issues that you have and make up those many positions and we're talking 32 places gained today in the race without really any really any worries at all in terms of battling he has strategized his way through as Jaeger under pressure Parginos moving to the outside to try and make this move sorted here Hyundai versus Honda and it is Hyundai who wins out here in this battle but William Foyle there is no argument for it he's driver of the day hands down yeah, uh, it's just been a masterclass in driving. But I cannot help but think what could have been with William Fall had he started further up the order. He was so unlucky to get what I found out was a power cut at the Fall household over in <laughs> over in Lincolnshire. Um, such a shame for them. But you know, William Fall, he's 
he's got himself a plaque, he's got himself third place. Great job to the Brit. But Hello. today... Slow down for the race leader there as he uh, goes on through. Is he desperately trying to bring this one down under two and a half at this point in time to make sure there's one lap? So he'll take the slow down. But no matter which way he looks at it here, he is going to be running laps here. 2.35 left on the clock as he moves his way over the line. So this is going to be really, really close here to see whether we're going one lap or more here, Alex. That's the crucial fact. Yeah, it's not going to quite hit 50 laps. A bit of inaccuracy from, uh, from us there. But uh, nonetheless, nearly 50 laps. It could be one more right now. This could be the final lap. It could be another one. We'll just have to see. But, um, yeah, Jake, take it away for this final lap. Well, some crucial fights still going on then as they look up and down the field. You've got Niang here who is on the back at this point in time of Simone Guido looking for position. So we'll see how that one all plays out in the long and the short as that one heads itself all the way through Blanchemont and on. But it has been a walkaway race for many a driver here in terms of this. And I wonder if Kovacs is trying to slow down here in the final stages to make sure that he is not going to be A, running out of fuel for one, but B, making sure he goes one less revolution around the circuit. Here comes uh, Nyang looking to the outside, trying to get this move. Contact as he goes through, and he will go straight on into the wall and try and get himself back going again. So this is going to be a lot of time lost, and definitely he's going to try and get himself going as quickly as possible here. He's got 15 seconds over Stanov, though, so he's got no real worries. In through Puhon, though goes your race leader here David Kovacs who really in this race has been all about the consistency value he stayed patient behind drivers he needed to in the early stages like uh, Valenges Parginos he knows what he needed to do early on he just needed to stay consistent and when he had to execute his strategy he did the one thing he needed to he stayed calm he put together a clean and consistent race and he has looked like he has never been in trouble for the way that this one has gone he's had a lead of up over sec over 19 seconds he's had a 20 second lead at points here in this race but he has just dialed it down in the latter stages managed the race to perfection as he heads himself through the left-handers now to Blanchemont corner with 20 seconds remaining on the clock. We may be going one more lap, but it's looking like it's going to be mightily close here as he hits the brakes in towards the chicane for the final time. 10 seconds remaining now on the clock. Eight seconds to go. David Kovac, I think, may just get one more lap in or we may be over the line at this point in time the clock hits zero the race is called and david kovacs wins here at the xtcr spa 50. it's a wait for dejo shoka who has a slowdown penalty on the final lap and will come home with second place come the end and will be incredibly happy about that one and william foyle to come home with a massive podium finish come the end after starting today in 35th place on the grid it's a massive battle it is still on here in the final stage because nate long here i believe has cash yellow for company and there in front is avesi who is struggling here in the final stages they're going to battle it all the way to the line long's going to try and pinch and there's contact between them and cash yellow is going to force his way through here as they make their way over and it's going to be a case of oh he just about did enough there long getting the big slides out as they go over the line and that was a well fought battle then over towards the end of the race you still got this one as well here alex as guardia desperately defends against Simo uh, simone guido as they get on the brakes for the final chicane they can see guardia on the inside and that is brilliant work there for simone guido to get himself through on the inside pick up another place it's all about the extra places because 19th and 20th right now they are still having this scrap look at this Fraser Rostens as well trying to find a way past Stanov for a top 15. there we go in into that final corner the undercut from Fraser it's not quite enough it's going to be 16th from Fraser but Stanov takes a 15th place he's been quiet in this race but the link comes through in the top 15 a good finish from the Ukrainian there Nate Long's dropping down the order um, I'm not sure. Yeah, he's dropped, dropped to 15th. I'm not sure what's happened. Penalty. That has to be a penalty of some kind. Maybe he got himself 
a late slowdown of some kind and it was unable to serve it. And as such, he is dropping it down the order. So we'll keep an eye out on this. Then they go through and Gorick there straight on. Uh, ultimately goes the driver in 20th, Alistair White, uh, Alistair White, even as he has uh, dropped back a whole heap of places. He can't be uh, too aggressive in the final stages of this race. A lot of drivers running themselves into troubles then late on. And we will get some confirmations of who has uh, necessarily finished where in terms of the way this race has gone. But confirmation of result, it is Kovac who picks up the victory over Shoka uh, by a margin of uh, a very fair lot here as they've gone through. Foyle will come home third with Garunian fourth uh, with Havesi in fifth and a lot of drivers coming through. Drivers who have come down in early uh, do believe that they have got themselves all of the things going on. So we've got yet to confirm uh, results here, which will come up uh, very, very shortly in terms of the way uh, that this one has gone. So officially, uh, it is the top three uh, that has uh, come over the line here today. And it is Kovacs from Shoka from Foyle. And we have seen some brilliant racing up and down that order. And of course, we have had a number of retirements here today as well. Uh, down at the bottom, the likes of Jeff Perkis failing to get it home over the line. Ben Payne had struggles all throughout the race. Karen Cheney, uh, as well, who struggled. Ben Sisko, the Jamaican, uh, in a world of hurt, as well as Jean-Pierre Aderu, uh, Derry there, running off into issues at the end of this race. But crucially, as drivers have come over the line here, Alex, it has been a case that there has been dominance at the front, and it has been Kovac, who has been the cut above in terms of the way that this race has run. It's been a masterclass in, in, in endurance driving, and I believe Kovacs has an esports background, as does Choker, Foyle, and Gurunyan, um, all of which sown their experience today. But Kovacs has been phenomenal today. Jake, take us through the classified results, please. Well, here's the confirmation then of where everybody has finished. So it will be Kovacs who picks up the win here, and he has done so fantastically. 16 seconds his margin over Shoko. William Foyle gets third with Zyra Gar uh, uh, Garunian in fourth position. And there's Savesi in fifth with Casciello sixth. Nate Long, seventh place. It is confirmed coming in with Pajinos eighth, Melvin ninth, and Tamas Jaeger in tenth. Foyle in eleventh. He got likes of Guardia, who was on the one stop. He finishes thirteenth. And there's Kan Yang in fourteenth. You look down the order, likes of Tatara down in twenty first position. Lee Horn seventeenth for him. He got the likes here who have struggled. Drivers who are a lap down. Giorgis was one of them. Madsby Pedersen, two laps down. Five non-finishers. Payne, Perkis, Carancini, Sisko and Lukadakis. They're not making it home uh, over that. And of course, you've got De uh, Deriu as well in 36th place who did not make it over the line. So those are the results uh, that were up on your screen. But what a very, very confident day that it was today that we have seen from these drivers, Alex. And more importantly, uh, I, I think that was a fantastic showing of what XTCR is all about, what the Exiled series is all about, because I think that there was a lot of struggles uh, today to see any real dirty driving out there. Yes, there was some hard-fought racing, but nothing that would have made you say, oh, that wasn't really bad at all. I think you have to say that was a credit to everything that had been going on here that the work that Exiled has done. Uh, absolutely. Thank you very much, Jake, for the kind words there. Um, thank you every, all the, to all the competitors for taking part today. Um, it's, been, it's been a challenge to organise this event, and it's still a challenge to, uh, to maintain it. But, um, yeah, thank you all for watching this live stream. There's been a lot of people engaging in the comments, a lot of people watching. It means a lot to us. If you do want to take part in Exiled Leagues in the future, like in one-off events like this, you can go ahead and join our Facebook group. If you just search Race Room Exiled on Facebook, you'll find us on there. Um, and the admins will be in touch with you, or you can go find the post, the relevant posts to put you in the way of a, um, a league to take part in. We have a TCR league coming up over the next few weeks, uh, starting in the next few weeks, and also a little bit of a treat for some of you guys, just to let you know, we will be hosting more Saturday leagues, um, sorry, Saturday races over the next couple of months, um, which will feature cars such as the old DTM 92, um, the the IndyCar, um, the IndyCar rendition of the FRUS, the Formula One rendition, the X17. We have a GTR league coming, um, 
race coming up, um, all things like that. But uh, there's plenty going on in XRs at the moment, a Wednesday league, a Friday league, and a Saturday league. Do get in touch to um, to take part. But my my round off the race, a brilliant, brilliant drive from Kovacs, a professional drive. Um, Choker did great to finish in second place. I believe he finished second place in the test run as well. So he must be gutted to have just missed out on the win. And William Fall, a triumphant drive to get himself from 35th to third place. Yeah. But um, yeah. Thank you all for having us. Jake, um, round us off. Absolutely. Some brilliant racing up and down the field, and you know where you can catch us. XR Virtual Motorsports, like, share, subscribe if you haven't already. A massive credit to everyone who has got things uh, done for us here. Of course, Kostantin Romanenko, who has been on the cameras for us today. He's done a sterling job uh, behind that. From Alex Everett and myself, Jake Sperry, it is Hungary's time to shine as Kovacs absolutely demolishes the field by a country mile in terms of the way that he's run that one. A lot of opportunities were missed from certain drivers up and down, and it was a case to be made that it was the person who stayed the cleanest and the most consistent would pick up the victory. That was certainly the case today, and it's one which will certainly hold great stead into the future of Race from Races. We'll catch you very soon here with Exiled Virtual Motorsport.